Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Let me tell you something, huh? Today, ooh, <laughs> we got a special, special, special guest. Give him one more. Special guest, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Puglio Cheers. is here. Welcome to the show. Hey. Thank you. Dude, thank you so much surreal. for flying in for this. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. Very man. surreal. Very surreal. How you doing? Doing great. Yeah? Yeah. You in LA um, escaping the, the winter or what are you doing? Escaping the winter. Yeah. Um, so winter, I don't know if you he's been through it. Polar yeah. vortex. You guys got a little winter, I, I have to admit. Uh, you do, right? I was very cold today. Yeah. Very cold. Yeah. It's a it's a different type of uh, cold. It's it doesn't like a, go through you cold it's kind of a <laughs> on the surface I, cold well i think it's because you don't pack for cold weather when you come here that's the other thing yeah. psychologically i yeah. was not prepared yeah. and cool. so uh i found myself yeah some of the nights that i slept mm-hmm. the houses won't have heat mm-hmm. or what you know what we heat don't even is heat not here. the same yeah. type of like in 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 my apartment i have to open my windows because the heat when it kicks in it will literally fry you dry yeah. you yeah. out oh interesting but, uh, yeah i don't travel that much no. i never really even did Mm-hmm. But uh, a couple of years ago, I met a girl, and mm-hmm. uh, her mom lived in Redondo Beach. You met her out in uh, in New York. In New York, okay. Yeah, and uh, so we started to come out here, and it was like kind of like I wasn't like thinking like skate trip, even though I still skated, you know, as yeah. much as I did. But uh, yeah, her mom lives in Redondo Beach, okay. and um, basically, you know. Actually, the first time we went out, I, I came out here was to visit because we had met in New York and she didn't live in New York. Mm. So I went out and uh, I came out to visit and kind of like called it like a skatecation you know, sure. kind of thing. But um, she ended up living like, you know, and I was unfamiliar with the South Bay. Okay. I didn't even know the South Bay was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, as I got down there, I'm like, where's Barrel Banks? Basic. Well, not, <laughs> no, it wasn't Where's Barrel Banks. That wasn't even like really on my radar. Yeah. But I found, I found out that she lived very close to Barrel Banks because mm-hmm. I saw the street, and I was like Barrel, <laughs> not not Milton Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think that at one point, maybe many years ago, I had gone to Barrel Banks when they were still kind of skatable, mm. and I remembered. And same, you know, like what we had spoken earlier about just setting. You know, you could be like close to something and you're like, this is around here somewhere. Yeah. 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 But um, so when I got out here, she lived very close to Barrel Banks, but also Hermosa Beach. And like, I have to admit, where I grew up in New Jersey, very far from the beach. Mm -hmm. Not very far, but like an hour and a half, two hours on the turnpike, you know, parkway, blah, blah, blah. And it's like when I was a kid, we would go to the beach. We we called it we call it going the shore, the shore, Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. So, um, but when we would do that, it was like. You know, and also being a kid, the beach is like a destination. When you grow up in the at the beach, it's like a lifestyle. But when there you're a you kid, go. it's a destination. Sure. So, um, yeah, I got out to the South Bay, and um, my experiences with California are like San Francisco. And uh, like I said, the first time, I'd actually been to San Francisco first. Mm. Uh, the first time I ever came to California, a friend of mine, me and, my, me and a friend of mine got on a plane. Mm-hmm. We literally didn't know anyone. Well, that's not totally true. I didn't know who I knew out there <laughs> yeah. because I didn't know what I was going to get into. But we got on a plane <clears throat> and we flew to San Francisco. And it's funny because I, we like met this person on the plane that was like sitting next to us and we just started talking. And I would say maybe probably I was doing more of the talking. Okay. And uh, next thing we know, like we didn't know how we were getting from the airport, like to wherever we didn't right. we, had, we didn't have a place to stay. We just flew oh, out on a whim. Wow. We just yeah. flew out on a whim. Damn. Oh. This was probably ninety four ish. Okay. I think I rode for Zoo York. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm fairly certain I rode for Zoo York. So I had like that kind of you know whatever. Like I knew sort of what I was doing. You yeah. know. Okay. And I and 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 having said that, I you know Zoo York for. The East Coast was a foray into skateboard industry, mm-hmm. skateboard world. Because right. aside from Shut and and Nimbus, which kind of like, yeah. which was what Shut, I don't, it didn't definitely didn't turn into that, but it was like this period of time mm-hmm. in between um, Shut and Zoo. Uh, 
there, w- there was nothing, mm-hmm. you know? There was like literally nothing. Like mm-hmm. you were just a product of the magazines and videos. Yeah. Sure. But Zoo was the big, it was the big one. Well, especially I mean, for out here on the West, on well, the West Coast. Okay, uh, yeah, and that's correct. But yeah. for me, it was Shut. Got, right, you know, right. Because Shut was like, when I was a kid, it was like, you just heard, you heard these like- Shep sto- Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 exactly. Mm-hmm. You yeah. heard stories. Um, but anyhow, so yeah, so we got on a plane Embarcadero was at its tail end. It was oh. when the uh, it was when the um, the volleyball courts were in the center of Embarcadero. Oh, oh yeah, and that was like basically we got to Embarcadero, and we were like we can't skate Embarcadero, mm. you know, which wasn't a necessarily a bummer because I was also like into the cauldron, like you know, mm. it's like the coals are hot, you know, mm-hmm. and you don't want to burn your feet. But um, it's a very small city, and coming from New York, you're like when you get out, you know. Granted, you don't. If you've never been to a place, you don't know the exact parameters of it. Sure. And it's also a very bizarre city because of the hills. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like just straight up bizarre. Um, You will see hills and you're like, who the hell, who thought to build that? (laughs) They won the view. But anyhow, so uh, so yeah, so we, we got on the plane. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't even know how we were getting from the airport. We didn't even know. This is pre cell phones and, you know, so met this person on the plane and we became, you know, we talked the whole, t- the whole ride. Uh-huh. And, uh, by the end of the flight, he's like, How, you know, like, wh- what are you doing? Yeah. Like, where are you, you know, we're like, Oh, we're just going to go to the Embarcadero. Like we were telling him like the Embarcadero, blah, blah, blah. And that's okay. all we knew, you know? Yeah. And, um, he's like, oh, okay, well I'll, I'm going into the city. I'll give you a ride. Oh. And he gave me and my friend a ride. He dropped us off at like the top of market. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably like kind of where the deluxe store was. Okay. Uh, I don't know what street that is, but uh, maybe like t- like right where the, before the Castro. Mm-hmm. And um, dropped us off. And my friend and I literally skated down Market Street all the way. He's just like, go go down to the end. Yep. That's where the Embarcadero is. Hmm. And we went down there and uh, we got there and the volleyball courts were there. And there was there was people milling about, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could tell, like, this, there were skateboarders over there, but it wasn't like, hey, he, I'm here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Was, but then Pier 7 was across the street. Pier 7... Was that even... I don't think was, was there yet. Okay. But it might have been. But I don't think... I think oh. it was Embarcadero. Okay. But I will say this. If it was there, it wasn't a, a phenomenon yet. Right. It wasn't mm-hmm. like the spot that had taken over the Embarcadero. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, so my buddy and I, we uh, skated... Uh, basically around the corner to, to brown marble. Okay. And we just kind of like happened upon it. Like, oh, there's brown, brown marble. And, you know, again, the whole, even with Embarcadero, you're like, oh, this place is way smaller than it looks in videos. Mm-hmm. So we got to, um, we went over to brown marble and we just kind of, you know, we just happened upon it. And this was like, dude, I was like literally fresh off the plane. And I ran into Greg Hunt and Mike York. No oh, way. Wow. And I started talking to them and... They actually pointed me to Pat Washington, and they're like, "Oh, go talk to Pat. He'll let you stay here at his house." <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Right. I swear to God. And Pat Washington <laughs> let me stay at his house for a week. That's so sad. Me that and my awesome. friend. Did he know who you know who you were at the time? Up until up and no, I I, no? I don't think so. The first, I don't know. I can't remember because it was 90, 94. Okay. So maybe there was stuff out there. Maybe my um, I dude, I don't know. I do, it's, a, it's all like real kind of, hmm. you know. Well, who, who were you on before Zoo York? Was it... Um... So before Zoo, I was on Nimbus. Nimbus. Yeah, and, and mm. Zoo started in 93. Mm. And, uh, but Nimbus had actually... Yeah, it was like... So basically the story goes is yeah. that Shut went up to like 1990. Okay. And, you know, you got Sheffy, Felix, you know, the whole, the whole mm-hmm. crew. Barker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Barker was even like a bit of a... a I don't want to say a periphery, but, but, you know, it's like Sheffy and Felix. I mean, Sheffy was like the phenomena, mm-hmm. you know, it was like, this dude is this explosive beast, yeah. beast of, an, of a skateboarder. Yeah. And the stories about shut, you know, for the most part, he was the, he was the mascot, like the head lion, mm-hmm. you know, he was leading the charge. Yeah. But interestingly, when shut kind of started, when, when those guys started to all kind of like leave, you know, like Sheffy, was courted going to life yeah oh yeah well no actually like h street sort of thing you yeah. know yeah which is essentially what turned into mm-hmm. life but um 
Yeah, he. Uh, so 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 people are peri- you know systematically leaving, and uh, at the same time there was all there was a whole bunch of younger kids that was basically making up this new generation of shut people that also looked up to shut as like. I mean, like I said, it was like kind of the only thing. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of stuff happening in like Jersey Shore, you know, New Jersey. I mean, but another thing that people don't realize is that Shut was basically Rodney Smith, who was half Jersey, mm-hmm. and then you know Bruno, mm-hmm. and it was that was the New York connection. Yeah. But most of the dudes, it, I shouldn't say most of the dudes. It was a, it was a big like tri-state, you know, Jersey, New York, Connecticut, yeah, and, mm-hmm. and also like other, you know people from wherever did I mean, you ever Barker was PA you know yeah. So, oh yeah so did, did you I, ever want to get in on shut no was that I was your... way too young oh, I okay. was I was way too young and I in, and the other thing about shut is that for as much of a presence that shut has in retrospect mm-hmm. unless you were like in the epicenter of it it was all just like legend gotcha. you know? and so mm. I didn't actually start going into the city uh, until I was like, like kind of like 1990, 91-ish. Because where I grew up was like about 10, 10 or 11 miles outside of the city, outside of Manhattan. Jersey. In Jersey. Right. And basically in 88 and 89, dude, New York was Bad shit bonkers. Yeah, <laughs> like it was a different animal. Didn't want to go there. No, it's it not that I. It, it, it did, it's not that I didn't want to go there. But if my mother and father knew Whoa. that I was taking the train into the city, like it would have been like. Well, how old were you in '89? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> some some age. I was obviously like, young. I was in high school. 15, yeah. I was in high oh, school. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I graduated in '92. Oh, there you go. So I was oh. in high school, and you know, t- to be honest, like all my friends used to go into the city. And you wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. I, I never cut school. Oh. I never cut a day of school in my life, which huh. I, I don't know why I didn't. I mean, I know why, because my parents would have, you know, if they found out, it was <laughs> Kick yeah. Yeah. game over. I mean, it wasn't like my dad was going to beat the shit out of me or anything, <laughs> but it was like, you know, I just didn't want that kind of, I didn't want to see you what You don't want happen. the heat. Yeah. You didn't exactly, want the, exactly. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I didn't really start going into the city until kind of like, ni- yeah, like probably like, you know, s- junior year of high school and it was like and it was definitely like i was doing it kind of like behind my mom's back you know kind of thing like i didn't want her to know because like i said like my and my mother and father's generation like when you go back to like you know my mother and father would tell me stories about going into like greenwich village in the in the 60s okay you know and they're like oh we used to hang out on this church step and drink beer you know whatever (laughs) Yeah. yeah for them like where they grew up i mean it was almost like once you got out of the city, like once you crossed the Hudson River, uh-huh. you know, there's Hoboken, sure. and Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. It's like my, Hoboken might as well just be, but the river's big and, you know, it's slightly, you know, it's same mentality. Mm-hmm, like Jersey's mm-hmm. got a crazy, you know, like, I, I don't want to bring the Sopranos into this, but, <laughs> okay, you gotcha. know, it's like if you watch the Sopranos, that's kind of like Jersey, Yeah, you know. You know, there's there's definitely stuff that happens like the mob actually there's stories about um so my parents grew up in this place called lynhurst Mm -hmm. and it's basically like the meadowlands kind of it's not really the. it's like a a ridge up on top of the meadowlands and the meadowlands is this giant swamp and swamp sounds harsh it's not a beautiful place but marshland yeah it's marshland and basically um you got hoboken and then you got uh you know a bit of like sort of like Hackensack River mm-hmm. uh, and then you well there's Jersey City Hoboken and Jersey City and then you have Hackensack River and then there's Sea Caucus which is basically built in the swamp okay and then when you get past the swamp you get to uh, Rutherford and Lyndhurst and and the swamp is actually where Giants Stadium is the New York Giants play in oh in they Jersey. built it in, okay yeah, yeah so anyhow where am I going with this? Burying bodies in the Netherlands? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I started reading, like I got into like mafia history when I was kind of younger. Okay. And uh, next thing, I'm, I'm reading about Murder, Inc., which is a famous, like basically uh, comprised of mostly Jewish mobsters. Right. Hmm. Um, but East New York was there, Brownsville and East New York in Brooklyn is was their home base. Okay. And Brownsville and East New York were comprised of Italian immigrants and Eastern European Jews, you know, mm. and they kind of just butted up in this neighborhood. Mm. And they were, you know, it was like the ghetto. You know, the Italians were in 
you know, they were like the wave of like, you know, immigrants at the bottom of the ladder. Yeah. And um, they formed Murder, Inc., which was basically Murder for Hire mm. back in the 30s. Notorious. Was it actually called Murder, Inc.? It was called Murder, Inc. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, and I, that's they, what they named it. <laughs> I don't know if they named okay. it, but that's what it collectively became gotcha. known as. And, you know, the New York Post could have named it that. Mm. Right. Which is probably what happened. Yeah. Because, you know, mobsters, I don't want to say that they love attention, but there is an element of, you know, mafia yeah. history that revolves around, you know, John Gotti's a per, the, the, oh, yeah. almost the pinnacle. Sure. Yeah. But anyhow, so I started reading about Murder, Inc. And I'm like, they're, they, they, their main dumping ground for, well, I shouldn't say main, but one of their dumping grounds was in Lynnhurst, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And that's where my parents grew up. Wow. And it's at the, you know, the edge of the Meadowlands. And then once you get there, you have like another ridge and then you have Pacific River. And, and then I actually was born there. And when I was two, my mother and father moved to Clifton, which is just right over the Pacific River. Oh, wow. So it's like 10 miles, you know, geographically to the Hudson River. Gotcha. And then Manhattan. You know, I could see the skyline from my, my, my right. room when I was a kid. That's so right. once you got wow. out there and started going to the city, I mean, the, it opened up a whole new well, world yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, you're talking crazy. Night and day. Crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I saw crazy, you know, crazy shit. And, and again, I was doing it with like, like kind of without my mother and father knowing. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. my point in saying that was that back then, New York was not a playground sure i mean it was for it was a playground but it was like there was elements of things happening there that were dangerous sure so to yeah, speak. yeah, you know, yeah it was yeah. a different if you go to new york now it's like you gotta like kind of really search high and low for like a dangerous you know yeah. scenario right you know it's like a very like a sanitized mm -hmm. thing and that's good and bad mm -hmm. what would it be like though people just robbing each other or just... there was there was the element of being in the you know, obviously wrong place, wrong time mm -hmm. is cliche, so to speak. And that was a whole city though. But it, it, there was a, there was large portions of the city where it was like, you walk down one block and it was like, you're just in the wrong place. Right. right? Uh, and it's not like, it's not like you were going to, as soon as you turn the corner, you're going to get robbed. Mm -hmm. But it was like, there was, you know, the city was known for uh, just brazen acts of, of wildness, yeah. you know? Um, and there was things happening there. It was, it, and, and that's the other thing is that the city at that point was changing very rapidly. Like the term gentrification, you know, it's like you, you could literally watch it, you know, mm -hmm. watch it happen. I mean, it's still kind of going, but, um, you know, the banks, the Brooklyn banks, which is the first place that I ever went to when I went into the city, you know, mm -hmm. my friend was like, get in the car, we're going to the, we're going to the banks. And I got there and uh, just like I was saying, off camera before you know mm -hmm. you get in like when i walked into the studio i was like damn this is I, this is not what i thought it was gonna yeah, look yeah, like yeah yeah and that's right. great apartment that's yeah. great no 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 whatever it's great when i got to the banks i was like damn this place is way smaller than i thought it was gonna look you know and it's just like the way the the way the buildings you know around you or the bridge or whatever it is just shape mm -hmm. light which is interesting though because i feel like seeing all these videos and stuff you wouldn't be itching to go into the city like you finally made it out there. Well, what, you mean when I was a kid going into yeah. New York? Well, that was the other thing is that there wasn't much video footage mm. back then. Okay. You, you know, you're talking, yeah. I mean, there was stuff. Yeah. There was stuff, but 411 was not a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. You know, so it was like. But there um, had to have been local stuff. There was. Stuff. Uh, there was uh, w one of the, you know, and I, I don't know if you guys have seen this video, but along the Eastern Edge mm -mm. is a, it came out in like 86 or 87. Mm. And um, so when I was a kid, uh, some of the first like skateboarders that I had, had ever seen was um, this guy, JT Murphy, okay. who I think was from Passaic, New Jersey. And he was like a weird kind of like, I don't want to call him like a 70s skateboarder because he wasn't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is going back into like almost 1985. Okay. And so street skating was still this like weird kind of hybrid of like, yeah. you could get a freestyler who was like, you know, like Rocco. Oh yeah. Like when you watch Rocco skate on a street board, you're like, he's kind of like a, 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 a freestyler, yeah. you know, doing like whatever. And, you know, no, not, no discredit to, to, to Rocco, sure. but, um, you know, when you put Rocco up against like Gons or, Tom, you know, whoever, you it go. was like, you could obviously tell that Rocco came from a, um, a freestyle, freestyle background, mm -hmm. yeah. which is fine. 85, uh, when did you start skating? So I started like, kind of like, you know, 
bad, bad first board, even yeah. though my, my bad first board was still like rolled decent. It wasn't like a decrepit piece of like, <laughs> yeah. sure. but uh, yeah, we had these like, I had a blue like uh, GT, you know, the GT, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, and then my brother had a red one. Huh. And it, I remember the bearings, like one of the first things I remember is like the bearings were just so fast. And I was like, wow, this is cool. Hmm. But um, that was probably like 84. 84. Yeah. And okay. it, you know, to be honest, it might have, I don't even know how it got in my garage. Just appeared. It just day. appeared. There was a red board and a blue and a, and a blue board. And huh. I took the red one. I took the blue one. My brother took the red one. Was and, your brother uh, good at skating as well? My brother was, was not that good at skating. No. He never took to it. I mean, he could like cruise around, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, he just never really skated. Yeah. Older brother. Younger brother. Younger. I have three uh, younger brothers. Oh, sometimes yeah. it's the younger ones that are better than the old. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Just, uh... None of my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> my one brother actually skated for a little while. Oh, did he? I, yeah. I, I, hmm. But I was also like, I was I was. Did you even want to hang out with them though? Younger brothers too. Older brother, they just want to go out and do there their wasn't, own thing. There was an element of yeah, that. Bet. There was yeah. an element of that. Um, I definitely had like my friends and he had his friends, sure. you know, and, uh, we were just normal brothers, you mm -hmm. know, like we would beat the hell out of each other. And, uh, <laughs> there got a point where he could beat the hell out of me and then I stopped. <laughs> That's when you started going into the city, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, look, if somebody's going to beat me up, it's going to be for some greater for cause. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least take my money or something. <laughs> but, uh, the real like sort of, uh, you know, spark was I had this, uh, I had this friend who was into like uh, BMXing. Oh yeah. And he always had the sickest bikes. He had a sick red line. He had a sick hutch. Mm. His hutch was like, it was like diamonds, you know? And, uh, well, that was a dope logo, the hutch logo. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that, but, um, but anyhow, so this dude made, basically would go down to the Jersey shore every summer with his family. Okay. And my family, one, like one year we would go to like South Carolina and it was like the one week of like vacation, you know? Mm. And you're like, Oh, vacation. It's like yeah. this thing. But uh, I had another, I had this, that friend and he would, you know, he would go down to the Jersey Shore and maybe he went down there often. It seemed like he was kind of going back and forth all summer. Okay. And uh, he came back with um, a town and country. And I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a pretty sick board. You, you know? still had your little blue. Yeah, I still yeah. had my blue board. And maybe this was happening kind of like right at the same time. Mm. Maybe the reason I knew, or I, I, I can't remember. Okay. Maybe I might have even asked my mom and dad for like the blue boards, okay. you know, the blue and red board. But um, this dude came, he lived on this, uh, he lived in this house and there was like his driveway was a hill. Uh -huh. And uh, one one time he came back from the Jersey Shore with like a like a regular like pig style, like a, like a what, what we call the wide board, yeah. you mm. know? And um, again, I didn't know anything about Thrasher or any any of it. It was like totally new. He came back, had the the wider board, and I was like, "That's like a real skateboard." And uh, you just knew it, right yeah, away. yeah, yeah. And so you know, we start going down his driveway, mm -hmm. and then I asked my my old man for, oh, well, I asked Santa Claus or whoever. <laughs> yeah, Santa Claus for uh, for Full like a Nick. regular. I, I I there was a bike shop up the street from me, and they had skateboards in on the wall mm -hmm. which was kind of odd for like a bike shop but everybody it, with the bike shops though a lot of people bought their first boards yeah. at bike shops i, yeah, I definitely it's did too so the local so, so there was this one spot called the cycle infirmary it had skateboards on the walls but i was the idea of getting the skateboard was like it wasn't there yet you know i was just looking at it like thinking to myself like oh i i think i i want one of those right you know? And I remember, I'll never forget this. Like, I remember for sure there being a Mike Smith, you know, the duck, the mm -hmm. um, Madrid board. Yep. A Billy Ruff GNS, the chalice. Okay. And that one was the most fascinating to me because I was like, skeleton hand, mm -hmm. bubbles coming out of this yep. chalice. And then the uh, the Lester splash board. And, huh. and it was like, I, I was just like, what is this thing? <laughs> like, what is this thing? Like, who did these, who did this? art you yeah. know and uh because a bike is a bike you see it you're just like it's red it's yeah. black exactly it's brown. You, there's nothing you can do graphically Big with tires bikes. Yeah. Exactly. tires it's a little yeah. sticker but right. but skateboards you're essentially looking at a painting mm -hmm. you know a canvas blah, yeah. blah, blah. those are the three that caught your eye right those away. were the three the jeff phillips was also out at the time okay the breakout mm -hmm. um but uh those th four mm -hmm. were the ones that i very like distinctly remember, especially the Lester Splash. And that, that board always has like a kind of, you know, 
place in my heart. Like, and it's funny because it wasn't until fairly recently that I started to like collect like stickers and stuff. But that was like the first one. That and the oh. Phillips were like the first ones. Because when I was a kid, I also never bought stickers or bought overly bought boards because I was like, I was poor. Like, I feel I, like stickers are like the intro drug to get kids in this game. <laughs> yeah, for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. That's like, oh, definitely well, stickers were, were good back then. Like, the kids would like, yeah. show up in the shop, they're like, I have a doll in my pocket. I'll buy a sticker. Yeah. You know, well, because they used to put the art. They, they buy a board. Yeah, they used to put the artwork on the stickers. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, oh, logo. Yeah. yeah. Well, you the know? other thing too is that, to be honest, like when if I had a dollar in my pocket, I wouldn't spend it on the sticker yeah. because I was like, go I buy a cheeseburger. Yeah, or whatever. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, what did Santa Claus bring you? Uh, so he bought me a Powell Peralta sword and skull. Complete. Not even any of the ones that you actually had your eye on. No. Which is fine okay. because Powell at the time was, so, so as I started to, and they didn't actually, they, my, my parents didn't get the board from that cycle infirmary shop. There was another shop in town called the Clifton Speed Center, oh. and that was like a legit skate shop. Gotcha. So by the time I had gotten there, then I started to learn about like Powell and stuff. And Powell was like the shit. Yeah. You know, Future Primitive had just come out. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, I want a Powell board, you know? Right. But interestingly, I didn't, you know, and this is kind of like, again, like getting into like a bit of night, you know, being naive about just what was happening. Uh -huh. I didn't know like Lance Mountain or, you know, Tony Hawk. I mean, I'm sure I quickly learned, right. but I just, I wanted the, the sword and skull. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I got the sword and skull. My brother got the Ripper. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, so those were like our, fr and I got a complete. Uh, I'll never forget it had like the nose bone, tailbone, everything. Whole, the whole shebang. The whole shebang. Wow. No bird though. No bird. No lapper. But I had ventures. Bird. What's a bird? A lapper. Oh, the lapper. Yeah, a lapper. Yeah. You Kelly, know, Kelly I have it. no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> 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 you never heard bird before? I'm right on the. No, no. Bird no, was like no. a brand. Yeah, I bird said, was a brand. I yeah. started, yeah. became like the clean Yeah, because yeah, they look like the middle finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. right. Gotcha. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, no, that was before my time. Too, yeah. But I know. But you know what? I'll, you, you, when you started, there was lappers were gone. We're, they right? were gone. Yeah. Yeah. What's a like, what? What is a lapper? So it just basically get, get like you if you curve. do a disaster, mm -hmm. or yeah, or it gets you up the curb. Mm -hmm. Like it's just basically this thing that it's goes over. Plastic, your, yeah, oh thing. yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost like lace savers for a skateboard. Yeah, basically, preventing yeah, you yeah. from hanging up. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about lace? That was cheating though, right? It's oh, like well, a little cheat, cheat code. Yeah. No, it wasn't cheating because it was it was the, I don't know, it was like. I mean, it was part of the process, right? Yeah. Like Tony right. Hawk rode lappers. Like, is he cheating? Yeah, maybe. He's maybe a big he cheater, <laughs> yeah. huge cheater. I don't like. Maybe I don't like him anymore. <laughs> I found out he's cheating. Yeah. So, uh, so you got your you got the Powell board. Got the Powell board, and um, what? This was how old do you think you were at this point? This was, was uh, it's like ten or eleven. Ten or eleven. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of like, I, you know, I have a tendency to ride. This wasn't always the case, but as of late, I've been riding stuff. I just, I got kind of lazy with like changing wheels and definitely the trucks for me. Like I do not like breaking. Yeah, I noticed your board in. the other day. It was like straight to the axle. Straight to the axle. Those, okay. So yeah. you see those wheels right there? And I, we, yeah, I would have never guessed that that's Bobby Pio's <laughs> board. But, uh. Well, anyhow, so I, I, I was riding these wheels in New York and winter time is like, you know, I don't want to say I skate less. Because I, I, it's slowly you get used to being in like 30, 40 degree weather. I had yeah, kind of sure. had this thing where it was like, if it was under 40 degrees, it was like not really worth it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, as of late, the last, like bef right before I got out here, I was like, there was one day it was like 32 and I'm like, ah, screw it. I'm going to go and just Lair skate. Up. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And uh, I don't like skating in long johns, but sometimes it's like, if you want to skate the long, it's a necessity, you know? yeah. but it's like. When you get into layers, you start, you know, playing around with what your kind of like comfort, your comfort it's zone like is. It's like putting on pads, right? Exactly, Helmet, exactly. knee yeah, pads. Yeah. You so anyhow, right. so I was getting used to the the, uh, the weather and I was mm -hmm. just like, didn't really. And, and the other thing is that if when I ride trucks, I ride them down to the freaking axles, you know, because I don't want to spend the time breaking in new trucks. It's the worst. And it's, a, it's literally, it's like this looming, you know, this looming thing in the back of my mind that oh, at yeah. some point I might, the shoes are hard enough. Yeah. And, you know, no, shoes now are kind of like you could take them out of the box, put them on. But even changing the wheels. Yeah. It's like the bolts can strip Dude. and then the... Okay, so this is this is the story. So I get... I did it. I tell you this one the other yeah, day? Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, yeah. Caps. So I go to um, the El Sereno Park mm -hmm. and I had seen that object on the internet. Okay. Somebody posted footage mm -hmm. of it and I was like, oh, that's a, that's a sick object. And uh, so I was like, you know, and the thing about going to a skate park here 
Uh, well, skate parks anywhere. It's like it's like uh, you'll overcrowded and you, overcrowded. Yeah. You'll see some dude that's flying around and you know <laughs> sure. whatever, and that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, so we get there the first night that we went out there, and it was a little crowded, but it mm-hmm. was super fun. And so I aspired to go back and have more fun with it. <laughs> and, uh, Cause you know, you, you leave a place and you're like, Oh, I can do this on this. Yeah, so you start thinking yeah. about Branch different thinking, things. Yeah. I, I should have tried this. Right. But so, the guy was flying around. It yeah. Be. Yeah. Anyhow. So I wanted to go back and my buddy was like, Oh, we're, you know, we're going to go back to El mm-hmm. Serino. So I was like, kind of in the daytime, I made the, the jump into switching the wheels and I knew it was going to, I'm like one of the bolts is on, uh, one of the truck nuts is on mm. backwards because I couldn't get it to thread already. Oh wow! Or yeah. just when you were switching them out? No, no, it was already, already. It was already oh, on no, there. That's bad. And I definitely horrible. employ the crazy glue. Yep. Sometimes I'll put the bolt on. Crazy glue goes right on. Yep. You know, whatever. But uh, the 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 re-threading tool is brilliant. It's great. But it's a pain in the balls. Absolutely, <laughs> pain in the balls. And uh, hard to find. Not everyone. Yeah, yeah, dude. True. You go into like, Strange. yeah, you go into skate. I mean, to forget about it. I, I, I ride fifty classics, mm-hmm. and just finding those is difficult. Yeah. you know, even in New York, fifties, fifty classics. I don't want to say rare because you will go, yeah, to a shop and they'll have them. But it's like there was a point in time where the fifty classic was. I'm, I'm riding a setup from like <laughs> 1997. What, what size? What size board? So I ride a seven seven five. Boom. Sick. There you go. Which is not just my size. Difficult. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, seven seven all day long. And they make all them. That, yep, that's your yep. shape that you yep. get made. Sometimes, sometimes I get that shape. Okay, but, it, but they do have it in the lineup. Really, that's yeah. great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, hats off. Thank you. <laughs> but um, but what are you doing? Switching your wheels so, before you go to the park. So so here's the thing. So I knew the situation. New wheels at a park too. It's not well, this is a... this is what I'm getting to. Okay, go ahead. So <laughs> I I I'm gonna go to El Sereno. Yeah. And uh, you know I'm like I can't go into that park because it's I don't know if it's, somebody described it as grippy. But oh really? Yeah. I haven't been there yet, so yeah. I don't oh, know. Oh, it's fun. Okay. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I just imagine skate parks slippery. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I knew that if I uh, I knew that if I put new wheels on, I was gonna have to like make them grippy you know skate so, in the parking lot for a couple so i'm minutes. going down i get there and there's a hill in front of that place and um i put the i i s- successfully changed the wheels so i got four new brand new spitfire 50 classics Perfect. On, my, on my board and uh i get there it's night and i'm like all right i got to do a couple power slides and there's a hill mm-hmm. i get out of the car and i walk up the hill and my friend, my friend was like, you know, texting me. I was like, listen, I'll, he wasn't with us, but I was like, I'll let you know if it's crowded or if it's not crowded. Because yep. he was like, oh, I don't want to go if it's crowded. Mm-hmm. So I walk in, I look. Uh, it's amazingly not crowded. Oh. I do see f- like four or five bikers in there, which is, oh. is kind of like maybe, maybe this was going somewhere. Oh. Mm-hmm. But um, so I get up to the top of the hill, not all the way to the top, just like I come out of the park from like sending the text like, oh, it's not that crowded. Sure. So now I'm going to slide the wheels i literally get on the board and i take like a push i do a power slide i do a second power slide i do a third power slide my wheel shoots off (laughs) down the block (laughs) and it's on the hill and i'm like i'm not at the bottom of the hill like i'm like in the middle of the hill are you still going too well i i quickly was not going (laughs) yeah yeah, exactly because i hear this like i hear this grinding and i'm like what is that noise and you know you don't want to hear that noise so uh, and I, your wheel's taken off. <laughs> yeah, and so I just see the wheel shoot off down the street, and like I said, it's dark, mm-hmm. and I watch it for a split second, and I see it go left. Because you're fo- you want that wheel. You're following. I definitely it. want <laughs> that wheel. It's dark. I and definitely everything. want that yeah. wheel yeah. because I don't have another set of wheels, right. and I don't even ride for any. I don't ride for anything. But you got to go look for the bolt too, and the. B- the washer, bolt was a, a washer? The bolt, I had, I was, I had written it off. Okay. <laughs> I'm not scared. I, 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 as soon as I heard the grinding, I'm like, this not is, skate in the park. Yeah. You know, this because is maybe beyond a re-threader. No, I could have done the, I, if I nope. found the bolt, the yeah. bolt is not the problem. Because okay. I could just go back to my friend's house where I was staying and he's got a whole thing of bolts. Okay. Actually, I had, I had asked him for a bolt and I. Oh, and, so you looked at okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so I had actually uh, replaced one of the bolts gotcha. and that might have been the culprit. But anyhow, so the wheel shoots off down the block. Right. I watch it for a second, but there's a car behind me, like, you know, like the, um, LA has got like a weird, like passive aggressive driving. Like, okay. So, so when you walk out into the street in LA, if you put your foot into the street, the car will stop for you. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a car coming and they'll stop for you. And you're like, 
What are you stopping? Well, because we, <laughs> we get tickets. We get tickets for cutting off pedestrians. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Right away. Mm -hmm. right away. Have you ever gotten one? Um, no, but I've seen <clears throat> setups where cops will set up near a crosswalk. Yeah, and they'll actually set people up. Yeah, and they'll set wow. people up and wait, yeah. and they'll have people See, cross. In yeah. New York, we have, like, hookers. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You get set up with that one. You can't take that ticket back to the wife yeah. and be like, oh, I, got, I got set up. Right. Right. She was in the street. I had to stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh. this car must be just waiting So the for car you. is, like, passive aggressively waiting behind me but mm -hmm. I know that that's a thing and I don't want to be like the guy like looking for the bolt you know <laughs> so I watch it go to the left okay. and it's like a gutter ball in bowling you okay. know you're like alright that's in the gutter yeah, Right. I see it go down left I'm like alright all I gotta do is walk down like five cars it's gonna be under the car it might have even been under our car you know mm. but I I, I write the bolt off immediately. I pick the board up. The, the bolt is done. You're okay. not, you're not, it's we're so rare that you actually find a yep. bolt. And usually totally. when that happens, you search for a good amount of time. Oh, and, it's, yeah. and it's never in the place where you think Even it in is. the daytime. Mm -hmm. Daytime, yeah. yeah, yeah. So walk down five cars. Got to be five cars. Go down. It's not there. So I go up each car and I'm on the ground with my phone's light. <laughs> yeah, sure. Know, like under sure. the car. And it's just like, the most barren landscape under the car. Like there's not even leaves. There's nothing. There's <laughs> yep. nothing in the street. There's nothing in the street. There's no like debris each under each car. Nothing. And I'm just like, okay, there's not it's not under that one, not under that one. I get down and I'm like, I don't want to mess with the sewers. Because there is two sewers, one on one side and one on the other side. Did right? you even look down the sewer to yeah, make dude. sure? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so so I go I must have had the leave trap too so that way it, so the first one yeah. the first sewer so I go I, I hit every car on both sides mm -hmm. there was a dude sitting in the car one of them and he's like what are you doing what are you doing? yeah <laughs> there was another dude sitting in the car up the street and I'm like hitting I'm hitting cars like, what is he doing yeah I'm hitting, doing? I'm hitting cars that I shouldn't even be looking under that are like before the wheel came just off to make sure just to make bounced, sure yeah maybe. bounce whatever yeah. then I go hit the sewers First one has a, a what'd you call it, a leave trap? Yeah, a little grate. And I'm like, all right, it's definitely not in that sore because it couldn't get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, my brain is thinking like, yeah, it's probably down it's in probably there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. But then the sore across the street is an open, like one of those open things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, I'm in my chest. You're not in there. Oh. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I was in. I was literally in the sore, <laughs> looking. <laughs> <laughs> turning over bottles oh man but, across the street yeah but the sewer was incredibly uh, clean oh incredibly well oh, the, the, the rains rain. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 right 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 it was incredibly clean and there was like a bag of like um what do they call those like pig pork rinds yeah, oh, pork pork yeah, rinds. yeah, oh, yeah. a bag of pork rinds <laughs> <laughs> and like take maybe, a bite no yeah. no no it was, it was empty it was grab empty. that had dinner yeah. <laughs> But, uh, there was dude, a clown I, down there too. Those were. I spent I spent an hour, easily an hour, looking for the wheel, and I never found it. I was in the grounds of the, uh, you know, that's a big park. Uh -huh. I was like, maybe it hit the curb and bounced off. But dude, I looked everywhere. Easter egg hunt. It's funny. And I could not find the wheel. Yeah. Oh, oh, I walked back up the hill after I had basically like given up, and I find my bearing. One bearing. <laughs> oh, they popped out the bearing. One bearing did. Oh wow. I don't know if the other one did, but. That's an odd thing too, because like yeah. usually it's just the bolt, the you know whatever. Right. But I found one bearing. I put it in my Man, pocket. Those wheels are <laughs> bouncy though. Yeah. It's, it's funny because halfway through your story, I looked over at your board and there's old ass wheels on there. That's, so I figured. So that, that's I, the I old, figured you I, didn't find the wheel. So, so yeah. basically, what happened is I went back to the spot that I'm staying at, and I pulled those out of the garbage. Put and your old put ones back on. on. Yeah. But I, I yeah. literally did not sleep that night because I was stressing out about. Not only, you know, now I have to rethread, yeah. sort of. Um, I have to find another set of 50 classics, which is an egg hunt unto itself. And I have then, some 51s here, didn't you? Really? Yeah. What, what, Actually, what? they're the uh, Formula Forza. For, yeah. What about, <laughs> what about Thebo? Can't you hit up Thebo? No, no, no. That's not a problem. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. That's when I get back. Well, well, yeah. Now I got to walk around. I was already walking around with this, and people are looking at me like... <laughs> Dude, what are you? Go, what, go get some that's new wheels. Right? <laughs> yeah. But when I skate, I skate by myself, so I'm not looking at myself. Like, right. I know it's a thing, but it's like it doesn't bother me. It rolls. Well, like, yeah. so when you were like, you know, filming all these video parts and no. doing your thing out there, was yeah, it yeah, new yeah. board? Oh, yeah, yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's oh, so just, you were. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. only recent where you're into the old shit. No, no, no. I'm not into it. Oh, you're not even I'm into not, it. I'm not into it. Oh, I like, thought you said you were into I, it. I mean, I. 
it's just I don't I don't really care. You don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Like okay. I don't need to have I don't need to have new wheels on my board, you know. I mean that's that's pretty weird. It feels nice though. Yeah. New wheels, new board. Wait, so you were skating all the cellar doors with like fifty millimeter wheel wheels? Yeah. I never I dude, I've never seven point seven five fifty millimeter wheels. Seven five, seven five. Even seven oh, five. Wow. Yeah, yeah, going up to seven seven five for me was like a big jump. Yeah, like Adventure. I went up to eight one time and I was dude, like, I cannot. Yeah. <laughs> I look at eights. <laughs> I look at eights and I'm like, I'll take that out into the ocean and paddle out. <laughs> so you didn't get to skate El Serena. No, no, I skated it once, didn't get to skate it the second, the second time. time. So so about the bikes, you know, the bikes being there. Yeah. Oh yeah. My friend who went in there, he was skating and he was mm -hmm. like, oh, dude, the bikes were just in my way. Uh -oh. and, and I, you know, so basically as soon as the wheel came off, I understood, thank God, I was pissed. Mm -hmm. And at one point I, I let out. Like there was a, a sign. I, I let out like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a big park? In terms of what, like in terms of if there's three spin. if there's three BMXers in there, well, is it going to be the th tight? Three BMXers, even a big park, is like yeah. you know, yeah, it could a lot. be potentially. Yeah. I, I was surprised because in New York, BMXers are kind of par for the course there. You know, yeah. like you see BMXers in the park there. Um, here, I never saw any. BMXers. You never really. I never saw. They're that kind like, of aloof. Yeah. It's like this weird, they're there. Dude, I to be honest. They're at skate spots. Yeah, and I but, ne I've never seen a BMX. I've never seen a BMXer out here. Yeah. That's really that crazy. That was probably the first time. Kelly's got big beef with BMX. Dude, I saw a video today on it. I'm cool with BMXers, dude. But I saw a video today at the courthouse. My friend almost getting ran over by a BMXer. Exactly. Right. He, was go he jumped the, the ledge to ledge yeah. and then flew off. And my friend was just pushing right at him. And they almost jumped just, the ledge to ledge? Like, yeah, you know, the. The yeah, the, yeah like each cap, ledge he he bunny hop from each ledge. Oh, he bunny. I thought you did it on a skateboard. I was oh like, no, no, written. that's big. somebody yeah. did that. Yeah. Shit. Oh, I think um didn't Luan do Luan Oliveira? Yeah, yeah. I'll that. I, I had my spleen removed. Did you? Yeah, because I ran into Jose Rojo at a demo. We were doing an enjoy demo, really, and we we crashed into each other. And I tried to duck. I think like as he was coming at me, mm -hmm. and he kind of like caught my back. And I thought that I had just like maybe like bruised, bruised. the rib, but then like Rubbed I, think, spleen. I went a, like a day or two without going to the hospital because I was like, I'm not going to go to the hospital. And then uh, we were sitting at dinner, like a full enjoy kind of thing. Sure. And we, uh, we were in North Carolina and I was like, started to kind of feel like weird stomach pain. Oh no. And I, I, yeah, we were at a Chinese food restaurant or something. <laughs> And I, poison. dude, I got up. And I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I got up in a panic, and I was like, I, I, I was like, oh, maybe I just need to go, you know, take a relief yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I got up, and then I was like walking towards the bathroom, and all of a sudden, I was like, this is not, you know, a gas, gas or anything. Yeah. And I turned to the, I turned to like the person at the counter mm. of the like where you walk in to get seated, and I was like, call me an ambulance. Seriously, really? you knew wow. right now. I freaked. I was wow. freaking the hell out because yeah. I was like, "This is like this Not is some normal. odd feeling." What yeah. the hell's a spleen for? A spleen. What does uh, it do? It basically like filters your blood. Oh, but your your bone marrow will do the same thing. Right. But, so they removed your whole spleen. So this is an interesting story. Um, a couple years earlier, I was on a enjoy. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a mad circle trip. A okay. gi giant trip. Mm. It was a uh, giant. It was mm. like New Deal uh, element and mad circle. Mm. And we were in Albuquerque, and uh, we were skating. You ever heard of Indian School Ditch? Yeah, yeah. It goes mm. for miles. Yeah, yeah famous, yeah. famous ditch in Albuquerque. Mm. Yeah. Incredible skate spot. But we were skating it, and it was like you know, dream, dream roll yeah. through this like mile long ditch. Um, we got to this one spot of the ditch where there was like a hip. Okay. And there was a pole in the dirt, and you could do tricks in front of the pole over the hip, or you could try and go behind the pole. And I tried to go behind the pole and I hung up and I hit the ground. Okay. And I kind of was like, all right, that was a hard slam. But I got up and then all of a sudden, within like a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. I felt something kind of like not feeling right. And so that one I knew like immediately that, and Mark, Chris Markovich actually drove me to the hospital. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Wait, and, is that your spleen too? Yeah. So, 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 yeah. so. What was Markovich doing there? He, he was on uh, Element. Oh, man, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I'll never forget it because I was like in the tr in the van. We had the tour van. Okay. And I, I was sitting in, I was like, dude, I thought I was going to die. I was a lot like, of pain. No, it wasn't pain. It was more like 
my nerves, mm. you know? Like mm. I was just nervous because I was like, what is, what's what did I, on? what's going on? Yeah. I thought the last thing I had done was ruptured my spleen, Ooh. but um, they were able to save half of it. And then I ruptured the other half at that demo with Jose Rojas. So you have no spleen. Yeah, so I got my spleen removed. Did that affect your skating at all? No, no. no? It just took a, it took Isn't a, you know, like... I, got, I had to have an operation. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that was like, uh, you know, essentially they'll, they cut your muscles, you mm -hmm. know, it's like crazy. kind of crazy. Well, I want to get into the whole mad circle and the whole, all that stuff, yeah, yeah. you know, because that was a big stuff. Nimbus and Zoo and... Oh, yeah, well, yeah, so, yeah, and uh, I don't know what you want to ask, but... Um, zoo you know yeah. going back to zoo so i rode for uh nimbus was like my first like first course. board sponsor yeah and that was like i said that was uh so there was this wave of going back all the way to the beginning of what we were talking sure. about. sure there was this wave of uh kids that were coming up in the shut ranks and then the new kids you were yeah talking the new about, kids right. and the next thing shut is just gone so there was this whole crew like stephen callis ryan mm -hmm. hickey you know all oh, these yeah. all these dudes the whole the whole like the sunset park brooklyn produced this like group of really great skateboarders mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but then there was like peter bc out in queens there was like you know matt o'brien up in uh in connecticut okay. um which i don't know if he was like exactly shut but um he definitely like rode for nimbus yeah. huh. and so we just kind of adopted uh we just adopted kind of those, all those new kids and 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 like i said the new kids might not have been on shut, but they were like a whole crew where shut was the only thing there, you know, and, and, and it was at a time where shut was developing its, or it was at a time where shut had developed an identity for, you know, New York. Sure. Um, you know, I'm sure like up in Boston, you guys had, you know, some brand that, you know, well, 3D. 3D was yeah. mainly it really. Right, right, right. Mm. But like that was from Connecticut as well. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. Mm. And then, you know, you got, so you started getting into like the localized, like little board companies, obviously shut was bigger than but but probably on paper it was shut was like probably you know nothing right, right you know okay. they were just winging it huh um you know it's funny i actually saw a photograph fairly recently of rocco wearing a shut sweatshirt oh really and i was just like oh that's really that's well, really... aren't they around these days too Didn't well they're they also it around yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, this yeah, was yeah. like in the this was in the oh, 80s I, oh, yeah, yeah. I gotcha so there was a group of you know all the younger kids mm -hmm. with shut not there uh charlie butterly started nimbus and that mm. kind of absorbed this whole like newer kind of generation oh, okay. of of like the new wave of kids huh. so nimbus and then charlie moved to kansas to go to art school so Nimbus was so done. So Nimbus was done. And How that, long did that last? 90, 90 to 92. Yeah. yeah. Two years? So then Zoo started. Mm. And Zoo was Rodney from Shot. Okay. Bruno was out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so that was like, but that was like, we were doing ads in magazines, you know. And uh, Nimbus did like small ads and slap. Well, yeah, like first, pages. first issue of yeah. slap. There's a Nimbus. Oh, it's small? Like quarter Little page. Small? Yeah, oh. whatever. Like even probably smaller than qu quarter yeah. page. Huh. But um, yeah, and then Zoo started, and that was kind of like this big deal, you know? Like it was like, oh wow, we're getting like a legit kind of company that does ads and magazines. And that's what I was saying with the before on the West Coast here, especially in my it looked like Zoo was the New York. Well, it was brand, yeah. right, right, right. Oh, like, it, yeah, at yeah. one point in time, they were huge, huge, well, yeah. definitely, oh, yeah. definitely. Like later yeah. on, Zoo was yeah. massive. Yeah. Um, after like mixtape, I feel like like Zoo was unstoppable for a moment. That oh, was yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, on paper, who the hell knows what was happening? Sure. But uh, anyhow, um, yeah, I was I was done with Zoo like almost by ninety four. Yeah, that quickly. You yeah. said it started in ninety three. Ninety three to ninety four. Why? Well, we maybe go, not. Why? Maybe ninety five. I, I, I. It's real kind of like it's fuzzy. It's, yeah, it's fuzzy. Mm -hmm. But basically, when Metropolitan started. Okay. Uh, Dune was was giving you know, and that's Rodney's boy, like yeah. you know. So he was putting everyone uh, in New York, and yeah, he was just putting us on, you know. Yeah. So like, met, and it was also it, Metro was a, it was definitely like a New York brand, you yeah. know. Um, wheel company. Yeah, the wheel company, yeah. and so uh, so Chris. But they start, made dope ass gear. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, make, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metropolitan yeah, yeah. was a pretty like amazing brand, yeah. um, and you know, not not to discount Zoo, but it definitely like you know tapped into that thing but mm -hmm. dune is from new jersey you yeah know? sure like he knew he knew what was going on yep. but he was he was in california you yeah. know i yeah. mean even huff and you know huff was out there at that point too mm -hmm. so huff had kind of like left fairly you know dune was definitely the first mm -hmm. um you know huff brought back metro yeah of course so, yeah yeah mm. yeah 
He actually paid for me to come out here. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Awesome. oh, wow. That's yeah. rad. Thank you. I thought we did, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should have done that. We should have said that. We should have. <laughs> <laughs> On paper. You On know. paper. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, so, they came in... So, so Dune started putting... Sending Metro stuff to Zoo. Oh, okay. And uh, then he started putting stereo boards in, in my Even box. though you rode for Zoo, he was putting stereo boards... I don't know how that exactly happened, you don't know? but... Okay. Um, just yeah, I don't know. You. Yeah, well, yeah. whatever. I was a big fan of stereo, you know. Yeah, great. Company. And um, I was also living in. I wasn't living in New York. I was in Jersey, so I was kind of like fo- I was like n- not far removed, but I was like not at the office every day. Gotcha. You know? Right. Um, and like I said, this was ninety three, ninety four. I was definitely skating in the city, but Zoo was in the meatpacking district. Okay. And, and I would skate downtown. And I, it just wasn't like a thing that I would go do. Like I wasn't like one of those dudes that would go out and hang out at Zoo York. So right. some of my stuff was probably like just, you know, I was like at the bottom end of like hmm. the, the, the sort of like feeding mechanism. Gotcha. So stereo came into the picture. Yeah, then. and then I, 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 you know, I just developed a relationship with Dune and... Uh, it, you know, he was in SF. I was, you know, it wasn't like we were hanging out or anything. Sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I started getting stereo stuff. Okay. And then um, next thing I know, you know, they were paying for me to go out to San Francisco. Right. And uh, then I was like fully on stereo. Me mm-hmm. and Ryan Hickey had gotten on at the same time. Oh. And Ryan was a big part of Zoo too, you yeah. know. So like whether or not that was like a controversial thing between, you know, Rodney and... I don't know how that... Oh. I, I Again, I didn't pay attention. I wasn't... I, it wasn't a concern for me. Right. <laughs> But to be on stereo at that point was like a, you know, that was like my favorite brand, you yeah. know? And I'm not saying that it was my favorite brand while I was on Zoo, but it was like when that visual sound came out, it was like, yeah, that was, they were doing it like really well. They changed right. skateboarding in a way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, the, 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 it like cleaned everything up. Like everyone started wearing silver pants absolutely. and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No mm-hmm. doubt. No doubt. You know, there's a lot of, you know, things that happen in between there. But basically, I got out to SF, went on tour. Went across the country with Deluxe. Um, and then the next thing I know, I was off stereo. Why? I don't know. I don't know. The story goes is that um, <laughs> because stereo was going through some pretty heavy changes. Sure. Yeah. The Jason, fact that they've, they've gone given, through different. Yeah. Jason kind of like leaving, you know, yeah. and or I shouldn't say leaving because I don't even know like what happened there. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, the tour was great. Like I got along with everybody really, really well. Okay. Um, it was basically like our little crew was like Drake, Sean Mandoli, Kelly Bird was kind of like in the mix. Oh. Um, dude, I have a photo of m- that Mickey Ray shot of me sharing a bed with Coco Santiago. <laughs> <laughs> like that was like my bunk mate. You were sharing a bed with Coco <laughs> yeah. Santiago. That's pretty, amazing. Pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, that tour was super fun. We went all the way across the United States. Huh. And uh, I think I was like 21 years old or something. You were in the van when it flipped, what, were you? No, no. That, was, that was pre, uh, okay. that was like just had happened. Well, and then you get back and you're off? Yeah, so I got back and I might have, I might have, after that tour, I might have gone to New Jersey and then came back out to SF and that might have been like 96-ish, okay. 95, 96. Because um, I think I got on Mad Circle around 96. But again, it's all it's all like, I've, I lived in SF twice. Yeah. Like actually paid rent there. One was when you were filming the FTC video, right? Was that? That might have been the second, second time. time. Yeah. 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 Because. Uh, great part, by the way. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. Um, but right, but right. anyhow. But that I, song, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just kidding. That stare back. Like the the stare back, too, dude. No. The, the <laughs> stare back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, what were you doing? Are you, were you giving it the eye or something? What were you doing? No, I don't know. I was just. Uh, just looking at it? Like, <laughs> I have, just looking what you what you just did? I have a weird. <laughs> so. So. The, the thing about... It was a wall ride, right? It was switch a front side switch frontside wall, right? wall yeah, yeah. ride, yeah. So uh, when I learned how to skateboard, uh-huh. switch wasn't really a thing. Right. And so my shoulder stance is just... I, it wasn't an ambidextrous thing. It wasn't, it wasn't the same way front way and back gotcha. way. Gotcha, right. right. It was like when you skated switch, it looked different. Yeah. And yeah. your shoulders yep. were set up. And it's, maybe it's just my own personal style, but... You know, no, a carrying. lot of people are close. The shoulders are closed when you're going switch, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. so, so I just, I don't know. It was just, I think my shoulders, because you're, you know, you're, your shoulders will follow your head and your hips will, or whatever, vice versa. <laughs> so I, it was just... 
it was just the way I was positioned. I didn't yeah. like, I wasn't like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was just like I mean, you did give it a good look. Yeah. yeah. I, I was dude, like, that was amazing though. I, I, people just, that got attached to it. I didn't think of it as anything, but, uh, it's yeah, funny. It's, it's funny, funny that, that a lot of people remember that. And, yeah. and, you know, there was definitely a time and I, I might've talked about this in maybe a print uh, interview or something, mm. but when wall rides came back, I was like, Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> came back for the second time. Uh, it's unsettling. You, you talk to, uh, village psychic. What's that? It was like a village psychic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and, yeah. and so, and, and I went into it in that thing, mm. but you know, there was definitely a point where like, you know, the, the, rick and crew in philly you know um with the wall rides thing was sick you know mm -hmm. like it was you know it was cool because they had kind of like brought back this sort of like dead art form sure you know because and i and i might have mentioned that in in that interview but the wall ride the i don't know and again this might have been before you started skating mm -hmm. but you know the first time i saw anybody ride up a wall like in real life i was like that is insane right <laughs> that is insane to do and then you go back to like Nottis and like people talking about seeing Nottis do it, you mm -hmm. know? It's just like, dude, it's crazy. I saw a sequence the other day that um, the guys at Six Stair showed me, okay. and it was an unpublished Nottis sequence. Huh. And you'll see it eventually, like on the the on Instagram. No, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on, uh, on uh, they're doing a uh, and maybe I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but uh, the Venice love letters. Oh wow! So, oh, sick! Yeah, so so they got they got some they got some stuff, and there's a sequence of Nottis in there, and it's mind-boggling. Wow. wow! It's cool, but everything Nottis, you know, does yeah, is kind yeah. of oh, mind-boggling. Yeah. Right. But uh, anyhow, so yeah, so I got I, I called Dune one day when I was in SF, and he was just like, I can't, we can't have you on the team anymore. Oh. Which was, you know, whatever. I was less. I felt kind of like I had been, sort of, not hit by a bus, but I was just like, whoa, that was a weird experience, yeah. you know? Because mm -hmm. now I'm like. What do I what do? What do I do? Yeah. How long were you on stereo for? How long did that last? It was like a year or two. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't really remember. Sure. I'd have to like really map it out. Right, right. But, uh, but then I, at that point in time, I was skating with Aaron Meza and Scott Johnson a lot. Okay. Uh, I, in fact, I didn't, I didn't skate with anybody on stereo. And hmm. so to a certain extent, it was almost like, okay, this is, you know, not as bad as it seems. Yeah. But I was definitely, at the time, I was very proud of myself that I was on stereo. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I, liked, I liked the brand. You yeah. know? Right. And, uh, but having said that, getting out to SF was also like a bit of like a jolting experience for me because I didn't grow up around skateboard industry. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden now I'm in skateboard industry land. There you go. And it's... It's, it's, you know, skateboard industry land is different than just going skating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. There's a, whole, Absolutely. there's a whole, like, hierarchy and there political atmosphere. There's things that need to be done. There's things, yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's also, and I'm sure down here is even, Deluxe is an intense, you know, San Francisco sure. Deluxe thing yeah. is an intense thing. Down here, it's like even even crazier, you yeah. know, because there's like the San Diego thing, there's LA, oh, yeah. and LA is just a massive, you know, um, but, you know, I was definitely into like the LA thing. Like I, you know, the idea of just being in a schoolyard mm -hmm. with a fence around it, no one to bother you, uh, you know, a perfect like recycled bench right. and a picnic table like that to me was just, and then a bank with a bench on top oh, of it. Yeah. Forget yeah. it. It was like, well, cause you know, you, ba you barely <laughs> have hard. like school footage right you had the you had footage of on that bank that you're talking oh, about. oh you right? mean in san francisco or california in general oh in la yeah in la in no, la yeah. i i had seventh street footage yeah. seventh street yeah, that's a one is, yeah, with yeah the long bank. beach and it's funny because when i think of so the first time i ever went to long beach was for like a uh, an asr show ASR. Mm -hmm. and i went there yesterday i was in uh long beach yesterday and i was like i told my friend i was like Dude, when I came down here the first time, I didn't even know where the hell I was. <laughs> I did. I literally did not know where I was. I could have been in like San Diego, and to me, I thought, and not to say that I never looked at a map, but right. it's like when, now that you got a cell phone, you're like, oh, here you I could am. see, yeah. Yeah. yeah, blue dot right yeah. there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's a but, satellite. Um, I just thought that Long Beach was like not part of LA, mm -hmm. and it's crazy how close it is to like. Torrance and oh, yeah, you know, right whatever. There. And that's kind of what I was saying when we first started talking about, you know, the Redondo and Hermosa thing yeah. and the whole South Bay thing. I started to quickly learn basically the history of 
LA kind of street skating, you sure, know, and the Venice thing and whatever. I mean, everybody knew about the Venice, the Santa Monica Nottis thing. Yeah. That was yeah. like a given. The yeah. Venice thing too. It was like that's that. But you know, being at Barrel, I was like, oh, and Jeremy Klein grew oh, up yeah. right over here, that's and right. Torrance, you know, blah blah blah, Rocco, Hermosa Beach. Like, sure. you start to fill in these gaps, and um, when that stuff was happening, it me being on the East Coast and like looking through magazines, it wasn't like it wasn't divulging that type of information. It was yeah. just like skate photos, you know. Thrasher had a period of time going back into the eight. I mean, Thrasher continued that like trash section, mm -hmm. and they would divulge this like really weird cryptic talk, information, yeah. you know. But you were Shit. like, uh, what does this mean? Yeah, <laughs> right, right, who the hell right, is right. you know yeah. who who is you know whoever yeah. that they're talking about? Who's Guy Camfin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, who is that? By the way, I don't use the old skaters. Dark Star, yeah. 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 yeah, real tech dude. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Who is Guy Camfin? Yeah. yeah. That sounds like it should be um, like a movie. Or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, that's a that's an obscure one. I Is haven't, that ever, I haven't that, heard that. That's name a random either. one to bring up, Chris. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm a random dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, anyhow, uh, yeah. So I was then you know just fast forwarding back into SF. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was with Aaron and Scott, and mm -hmm. that transition transition to Mad Circle. Mad Circle. Yeah. That's the short version. Such a good. Sort of <laughs> and by this time, let the horns blow was already out. Yeah, this, it was yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. there's two sections. Of, there's two, uh, you know, s kind of like periods of mad circles. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty much dictated by the two videos. Yeah. Uh, God, I love that video, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great video. Moses, uh, Moses, and uh, Ed Devere. I used to love Moses. Yeah. Great, super, great skater. Really unique. Style. Oh my God. Unique Loved style. It. Front nose. It, oh, front yeah. nose. Oh. Yeah. I mean everything, just the way his body kind of like totally moved while yeah. he was like skating, and his like weird yellow like hair, blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. almost like he had a bouffant kind of. <laughs> <laughs> just bouffant. When the FTC video came out, were you already on Mad Circle at that point? Probably. Yeah. Probably. When did because um, Five Flavors right? That was, was a video. after FTC. That was after yeah. FTC. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. You got a copy. There we oh, go. FTC. Oh. He's got the video collection here. Sometimes they I want to say it was like 96, 97. 96, yeah, 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 definitely 96, 97. Yeah, 97 was Penal Code. Okay, Penal Code. Oh, you know what else is a good one is the first FTC video. Yep, finally. Finally. Really great. Really good. Yeah. yeah. Penal I, Code I, was great too, though. No, no, no. It was great, but yeah. it was definitely no But finally final. was the, I mean, yeah. you had the... The Jerron Wilson part. Jerron, Chico, yeah. all these Chico, dudes. Chico, oh, Chico, yeah. Such the Chico good. song, How, the music in that oh. was, was excellent. How did you end up getting a part in FTC video? You just, just had was, footage? No, I was just, just hanging around Aaron. Aaron oh. tells the story, you know, like yeah. uh, he's mentioned it a couple times. Like, yeah, we were just going out skating. Like literally just And that's all out. it was back then. That's all it was. It was just was. going out skating. Yeah, and yeah. Man, to be honest, I wish I would have came down to LA. Yeah. Yeah. And no, no, no disrespect to SF, but mm -hmm. it was just like, that's where Deluxe was, mm, you yeah. know? And so, and that's where Mad Circle was. Yeah. So it's like, I had no real reason being in LA, mm -hmm. but just, I wish I would have gotten a little bit of a taste of like the LA schoolyard thing, mm. you know? I definitely skated Lockwood and um, that, but that's what I was into. I was into Guy. Yeah. Guy skating, like really, you know, yeah. I, I uh, you know, I tried to like, not emulate that, but it, uh, when I would watch him skate, I was like, "This dude is the, the he's the, the real deal." Mm -hmm. Totally, like he he really is a, a progressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it goes without question. Yeah, yeah. But, and he's um, also around the same age, so seeing him as a little kid grow yeah, yeah, up, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. You kind of got that yeah feeling. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, uh, I could do that. Too. I was really into his. Uh, <laughs> I was really into his, his uh, mouse part, and uh, yeah, a lot of it was like the way he dressed. Yeah. Oh yeah, like that was just his his life. I mean, for me, it was the the blind video days. You see this kid, you know, almost the same age, and yeah. just yeah. killing it. I, I have to admit, uh, video days for me, mm -hmm. never watched anybody's part except for Gonz's. Oh really? Yeah. What did you? So I don't know. Many good. I, really? I, I just uh, Gonz Gonz's part. I mean, great. It really just uh, eclipsed, and no disrespect to any mm. of the dudes, but I, even to this day. I don't watch any of those parts. Really? I just watch Gonzo. At least you part. didn't edit out Jordan Richter's part. Yeah. Well, then, then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that. Sounds like you edit out everyone's part. No, I, I kind of I, I did. I kind of did, but just I, there's it with Gonzo's part. It's more of like the overall feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not necessarily like what he was doing. It's the music. Yeah, it's it was the the, it, the, the whole, music is heavy. Yeah, the music is very heavy. Um, and I and I often wonder. 
I have questions about that video that I want to I want to ask. Oh yeah, what would be the one question you want to ask? Well, I'm, maybe if you had one, if Mark Gonzalez was sitting right here and you Mark had one, maybe past. you guys know this, but uh, I want to know. Well, there's two things, and I guarantee you that somewhere on the internet these questions Somebody's have been gonna... answered. <laughs> but uh, one of them is who chose Mark's music, mm -hmm. which he probably answered. Probably Spike, but probably Spike. Yeah. But the Red Garland thing is like a that's a weird. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the Coltrane stuff, there's way more, like, digestible and easily, more easily accessible Coltrane stuff. And so the idea of that deep cut was kind of like, man, yeah. this... And that, that, that song actually, like, opened up a whole world. And it's not like I'm some jazz aficionado sure. you know, or whatever. Yeah. But um, it definitely, like, opened my eyes to, like, what else is out there. Yeah. But uh, also... I want, and you know, this might be out there too in that in that blind footage. Like when Mark lays down on his board, yeah, in the street, and that car's making the left. Oh yeah, what happens? How sketchy. Yeah. yeah, I always wonder what happened. But what did is it? Did it ever come out? What the footage? Because I, I bet know. Spike Spike, Spike probably fun, yeah. filmed that, so he probably knows. Yeah, Spike probably had. Some but he's of, probably that genius who was just like, I'm going to cut it here, yeah, so well, people I, will. Well, that's uh, another one. You know, yeah, who made the cut? Yeah. Um, Man, there's so many there's so many little nuances in that in that part. Right. But uh, I'm this is it might sound crazy, but I'm super interested in where Gons grew up. Hmm. I, I want to go see Gons' uh, the house he grew up in. Right. Because I've get I've I've gotten over the years little snippets of things. Sure. Go walk around Southgate. Go walk around Southgate. Yeah. And I yeah. and and you know Southgate, the 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 South Central Zone mm -hmm. is a is a you know and and. No disrespect, but it's a it's a bleak it's, it's a bleak yeah. zone. Yeah, it's like just miles of these houses and the streets, and it's just like this grid of like. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say despair, but you go, you drive this blocks, and you're just like, this is just the same shit over and over yeah. again. You know, it's wild. Yeah. But um, I'm so curious about his experience growing up. You know, have you seen the uh, old photos of him skating the Veriflex board? in the uh the like oh, driveway yeah, on the quarter right. pipe yeah. it's kind of interesting huh. kind of interesting I, I i'm i'm super into uh development Deve oh, like you know? how everybody yeah yeah and the gons development is a is a even by today's standard is the most unique and complex of uh, de defining like all of what we do yeah. is you know defined you know don't get me wrong rodney is also right there and Rodney's brain is, oh, you know, for sure. You know. We'll write down a bunch of questions. Maybe if we ever have Mark Gonzalez on the show, <laughs> I'll get him answered for you. you yeah. know? Who knows if it'll have? I yeah. mean, you know. Mark doesn't talk about the past. He doesn't he talk does, about the past. That's, that's, yeah. that's the difficult That's the difficult Why doesn't thing. he talk about the past? He's living in the future. Okay. I never you heard know, that. Uh, crazy. I met O uh, recently. O? The f skate photographer O. Oh. And it's <laughs> 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 fine. Yep. Uh, he's quick. <laughs> well, let's go, let's talk more about the uh, Mad Circle because you turned pro yeah. on Mad Circle. Yes, yeah, yeah. When? How long did the whole Mad Circle thing last? Uh, ninety six, I would say, to ninety eight. So not not really that long. Yeah, it doesn't not seem really that long. But but I am the wrong person to get into like why retrospective. What oh, uh, okay. No, no retros. I, it's all really murky. Sure. Like, I, I didn't keep track of any of that stuff. But what about the what about turning pro though? Because that's a, that's a huge yeah turning moment, pro. I, you know? I I have my own. I have the original board. Though. Oh, you do. Yeah, I have that. I have one of those. Um, oh, sick. Do you collect a lot of stuff from your career? No, not from my career. No. Yeah. Yes, but no. You, oh, okay. Oh. I have some <laughs> okay. stuff. I have some <laughs> stuff, but I didn't save everything. Are you bummed about that? No, because there was a lot of stuff that got made without my consent, so to speak. Oh, like the I infamous mean, toy boards. Well, that's a whole another. <laughs> that's a whole another thing. So you just saved the stuff that just kind of meant something to you at exactly. this time. The yeah. stuff that okay. I like. Yeah. The stuff that I liked, I saved some of it. The stuff that I that I designed. Okay. Like graphics. You Sick. Know, definitely not all of it. And there is re some regrettable things that I wish I had. You know, one of the ones was the um, the stereo board. Right before I got basically booted off stereo, sure. stereo produced a board that was a graphic. And it was this, I don't know who the artist was, but it was a drawing of like Jason Lee, Greg Hunt, Carl Shipman, like the classic team. Okay. And then Ryan Hickey and I 
Oh, and I'm yeah. like playing the bongos down at the bottom. <laughs> it's in that disposable book. Huh. Okay. And uh, that's really the only place I can ever like see that board graphic. But there was definitely a point where I was at Deluxe holding one, and I'm like thinking to myself, why, didn't, like, you why didn't I take that? Yeah. Yeah. But it's, got time, your in, it's got you on it. Dude, that seems like something. At the time, I was just like, you never, ever thought that that oh, was going to Here goes nice. Raj going to go into the back. Don't want to in the cover? Uh, I don't know. There's two of them, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it would take us a yeah. second. You, I mean, do you want to try and find no, it? No, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, um, we'll look at it later. Yeah. But there is a stereo board. Yeah. So I have from stereo days, I have like, what, one ad maybe? Okay. I have that one ad, I think. The 50, 50, 50? Yeah. I have that. And then I have this like random, you know, this random board with uh, Jason Lee, me and Jason Lee on a board. Oh, it's so That's weird. amazing. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Wow. But the, interestingly, uh, the only time I'd ever met Jason Lee was at that Philly contest, uh, the Love Park contest mm -hmm. in 94, 95. Huh. And, Is it the uh, one where Jamal did the backflip? Yes. And was Vinny, Ollie, the, the Vinny Ollie the Gap, that one? Probably. Oh. I don't, I, I don't, I, I was not like trying to watch people Ollie the Gap. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever go online and look for. Oh, uh, dude, you have no idea. Yeah, you could it's, peruse it's bad. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right now I'm in the stickers. Stickers. Into, I'm into stickers. We'll give you some nine club stickers. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Great. Uh, basically, going back to what I was saying before is that mm -hmm. when I had a buck in my pocket, I wasn't buying You're a sticker. Right. Granted, I wish I did, but now, and it's like, it's not like I have money to spend on freaking, you know, Sergio Ventura stickers. But <laughs> How much does I a will, sticker go for? Well, it depends what it is. A Sergi Venturist. <laughs> What's I mean, the most expensive sticker you found on eBay? I, yeah, like the most expensive one I ever bought yeah. was a. Uh, I bought a original Nottis, uh, original Nottis first graphic for around eighty-five bucks. Wow! You, you spent eighty-five dollars on it's, one sticker. It's Nottis. Okay. It's Nottis. Okay. I'm not a board collector. Thank okay. God. Okay. I'm not a board collector. If you know that Gons board. Yeah. Though. I. You know. I, I, w I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I want that board, but uh, I... You're not going to go seek it out. That thing would be like, uh, yeah, that would easily be a grand. Easily. The lowest. Right. Yeah, common, common kind of like denominator. Sure. That one would be a sure. grand. But um, I'm not trying to spend a grand right. on a skateboard. Right. There's people that do it. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, but I don't... I Dude, I have a lot of stuff that I collect. Mm -hmm. Skateboard stuff is not kind of like my only thing okay so i don't have a i also don't have a lot of space i also don't have a lot of money that's it so um it takes both of those yeah it takes both of those yeah. and it's this shit gets heavy right. when you're moving dude i had to move out of a house one time and when i was moving out i was like i hope i don't ever have to move out again but see i like moving do you i do i, I move quite a bit <laughs> you're, you're a minimalist <laughs> huh? you're a minimalist i'm a minimalist wow. so when I move, I get the chance to get rid of oh, all man, so dude, much I shit. Really, I really, do you know really... how much stuff piles up in a year? It's insane. Okay, so and and this is this is a phenomena of like being in skateboard industry and, or skateboard world. Yes, skateboarding, you know, and this is going back even to like going into the skate shop. What I was saying before, skateboarding is not just it's not just the act of skateboarding. It's the, it's these objects. Mm -hmm. It's these graphics. Oh, yeah. It's like clothing colors uh, you know freaking hats and Jeez. and when especially when you're in skateboard industry you start to acquire oh yeah mass amounts of crap and totally. you're just like that shit piles up i'm pretty good with that stuff and you know the other thing is that i haven't really been in skateboard industry mm -hmm. realm for like quite some time mm -hmm. so it's like it's not like i'm getting boxes of stuff right um that's piling up i do have some stuff at my house that i'm just like what am I going to do with this? Well, stuff? I think as you get older in skateboarding too, you you're not the kid that just wants everything, right, or just hey, right, send right. me a box yeah, and I'll yeah, go yeah. through. You're just like, hey, I want this, this, and this. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take what I'm gonna yeah, wear yeah, yeah. or and, use. And yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, I, and I've and I've gotten very good with that stuff. Um, there definitely there was stuff produced uh, in, throughout my like you know sort of experience mm -hmm. in uh, skateboarding that I was like what the hell are these people thinking? Like, what? This graphic is terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> but when you get into the cycles of, you know, having to, like, move product. All the drops yeah, and yeah, everything. You have to, like, yeah. you Gotta know. fill those skews. Uh -huh. And so, yeah. so, interestingly, like, you know, one of the first times that a graphic got produced that I didn't, like, you know, say, like, yes, I want up, yeah. this. 
I was just, man, I was like, I was, what was it? It was pretty, I don't remember what it was, but I was bummed. I was like, this is, this is, that's terrible. Yeah. You know, all good, but, but just, it's just, you, you then are quickly kind of like, um, brought into the reality of that it's an industry. But at the same time, you don't even know as a skateboarder, you don't know how much that sold or this sold better and this and that you, you just, we're just skating. Yeah. And what's scary about the idea of certain things selling better than other things, it's almost like, um, yeah, well, I don't know, maybe the, maybe trick selection is a bad kind of comparison, but what's, you know, okay, here, here's a good example. Okay. So, you know, the look back, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, The whole look back thing. It, that is regrettable to me that one of the things that I am like known for is a wall ride. Is a, you know? right. And don't get me wrong, like no, you know, no, like, you know, disrespect to it was wall, a good wall ride. But it's it's funny because I'm like, dude, I had it, like that's I don't know, like it, it, you're just you never escape. But wall it's more rides, of the really, look so. back than the wall ride. Though. Well, that's even crazier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's fine, but it's just sure. like. Um, it's it's crazy to 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 to, to kind of like analyze what resonates with people and it's and it's it's wild that and this is where it gets you know kind of like a, it becomes a um, you know a, an emotional connection to certain things that there you could put out a product that you you know whether it's a trick mm-hmm. or, a, or or a skateboard graphic mm-hmm. and I don't know if how often you will you know do your own skateboard graphics but you could put out a graphic and you could really like it, but it might not sell. Exactly. And then there's some other crappy graphic that's got like, you know, Big Bird's balls on it. Yeah. It sells like hotcakes. Yeah. You know? Right. It's, it's, it's crazy. I think nine times out of 10, the logos sell. Sure. Which is just For a while, that, that was what it was all about, was the, the level logos. one sell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But. Whatever. I mean, that's, yeah. it's, an, it's an industry. So when you turn pro for mad circle was that was that something there you go was it when you turn <laughs> is pro that really a set of balls yeah kangaroo, kangaroo balls. balls what is it kangaroo balls they're real balls yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody sent that to us yeah. australian yeah. kangaroo balls so when you turned pro for mad circle yeah was it a big thing for you or did justin gerard come up um, no, like, no, hey no, we're gonna just, turn you pro no, no no it was just super supernatural super in the catalog what or you just like find out you're like you're pro in the catalog? Yeah, kind of. No, I think they like we talked about it. Oh, you but did. It's that stuff is just kind of like buried in my brain somewhere. Right. What happened after Mad Circle? So Mad Where'd Circle. You go? So Justin pulled the plug on Mad Circle, yeah. which was unfortunate. I thought that was a great. Well, fuck. I was, thought it was he a great was done. company. He was done yeah. with it. It's um, a good company though. I was, yeah. I, yeah, it was cool. I loved it. it was cool. Um, I saw that you were wearing a sweatshirt like on the internet somewhere recently. Do you, is that an original one or that that's a, a deer skating? Oh, he did, oh they made yeah. a. Yeah. Okay. So so he did a um he did a uh, a limited drop with oh, uh, Japanese market. Okay, and, uh, that's yeah. dope. Dude. Yeah yeah it's just it's kind of interesting. It's funny because uh, he offered me one and I was like ah I, I might not wear that you know like <laughs> but then when I I went over being out here mm-hmm. I had an opportunity to go to like look back library oh yeah and do the covers thing and I had it in my bag and I was like yeah maybe I'll put this on you know yeah sick kinda, whatever look good, that man. made that made me happy when I saw yeah, that I was like you. fuck yeah, man yeah, that's that's yeah, it's kind of funny yeah. uh, the second phase of Mad Circle yeah like when when I got involved there uh, and I know you asked me about after Mad Circle sure. but but I you know part of what attracted me to mad circle was the whole first phase you yep. know that whole first uh, let, let the, the horns, horns blow, blow. Yeah. all that you know. twist graphics and all that yeah, yeah 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 and that's you know and that's even like deep you know d- deep beginnings for mm-hmm. the mad circle thing because um you just there, want to be on the same team as matt willigan no I, well <laughs> moses Akani, but matt <laughs> moses, willigan was yeah. super sick too mm-hmm. but yeah i really moses was like the kind of like the thing there and it yeah. seemed like you were skating with sj a lot and, yeah and and, 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 and uh you know Again, that was just kind of circumstantial. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it was just who I like fell in with. Right. right. Um, I don't even know how I met those guys. Were you um, going back and forth from New York? To, you said uh, yeah, you lived yeah, in yeah. SF for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah. But... I, and, and so part of when I got out to San Francisco, I quickly realized that California is different than New York and New Jersey. Sure. Like it's different. Oh, yeah. You know, and I tried to kind of like integrate and like, be a part of the like community mm-hmm. out there but i just found it to be way too um you know it was like 
it's 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 intense. It's an intense like not only political environment, right? But there's just uh, you know again going back to that small city. Mm -hmm. It was almost like everywhere you turned, there was like some weird person that you're like, what? What the? What are you like? What? You know? Like, and I don't want to say like any one you know specific names sure, or anything, yeah, yeah, but it was course. just like you just were you were forced to interact with people that you were like, whoa, that's blah blah blah. Well, everybody's yeah. moving here for the industry. Exactly. Everybody's yeah. coming. And it was from... totally normal. It was totally normal. Oh yeah. But like I said, where I had grown up, that was not the norm. Right. And, 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 you know, you also had your own crew of kids and no one was really infiltrating that crew. But when you got out to SF, it was like, damn, this is a crazy like melting pot yeah. of like, you know, industry kind of like, you know, uh, uh, politics. I mean, yeah. that's essentially what it is to a certain extent. It's, yeah, right. It goes in between like jealousy and you know, that whole oh, yeah. uh, spectrum of- Somebody of, gets on this company yeah, and they're yeah, like, yeah. oh, why are you Can't on? Can't guy anymore. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and then yeah. it goes even deeper with like magazine politics because mm -hmm. then you got high speed out there. Yeah. You know, and down yep. here it's like, you know- Trans world. And yeah. back then- and If you quit one of the brands from- Oh, yeah. yeah and, you're and banned. Back, <laughs> and back then, you know, like today you have Instagram. Yeah. And it's like, you could almost just do your, you could almost be your own whole magazine. Oh, you that's what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, It's crazy. But back then it was all of these people- literally bottlenecking to cl to get into this one little yeah one small output per month yeah you know and so you know it's like with spots and like one-upping people oh yeah and like you know like just the whole mill of like so and so and and it still exists don't get me wrong yeah. mm -hmm. but in new york it was different yeah, yeah. i mean it still existed but it was there, there was not as intense, you know, uh, industry uh, um, involvement in the act of skateboarding. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Um, whereas in San Francisco, and I'm sure, you know, LA is much bigger, but I'm sure it's, uh, you know, much the same way. Mm. Oh, yeah. That people are just, um, it's a competitive atmosphere. Oh, absolutely. And I was just, you know, and then, uh, and then added into the mix with San Francisco. And I'm not bad-mouthing that experience. It's an incredible place. Mm -hmm. But added into the mix was, um, like, one of the things when I first got off that first plane ride out mm -hmm. there, I got out there, I got off the plane, and I was like, man, the freaking clouds are so low. <laughs> yeah. sure, I was like, right. why the hell are the clouds so low? Yeah. Like, what is this? You know? It's called yeah. fog. Yeah. Yeah, it was intense. And then you throw in this like insane transitory homeless oh, thing. Yeah. Like, drugs. Like it was, it was wild, man. It kind of tripped me out. Yeah. And then you know what else? The whole, like when I got, so Pat Washington lived in the Tenderloin. Okay. And I was like, you know, I'd been in bad neighborhoods in New York. Tenderloin's but, rough. But the Tenderloin was this intense concentration. And it was almost like, maybe it has something to do with flat surfaces. Like, you know, New York is very flat. Oh, yeah. But the Tenderloin is like hill of despair. <laughs> okay. Into next level of hill of despair and it's like as you go lower you get like almost into these levels of like one hill is like prostitution and okay. that's what, you know it's like yeah. this crazy mix but the tenderloin is like this intense uh you know really like uh corralled space of mm. like despair right and so be and and then the other thing that i was going to say is i had never experienced uh, like gang activity, like oh, LA yeah. style or right. California gang activity. So I got out there and I saw like, like, um, I saw like gangster, like, like California style gangsters. Sure. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, like, I, I mean, like I said, I've seen crazy shit in New York. Right. But I'd never seen like this style of like organi organization, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it, that kind of tripped me out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I, dude, I just I, you weren't vibing. I, I, with it, it was it was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting, but I wanted to like kind of get the hell out of there. Sure, you know. Sure, I was just like, I just want to go home and like, you know. So, but if you do, if you do that, mm -hmm. then you are essentially pulling yourself out of like the game. And that's what's mm -hmm. tough, and that's right? Because tough. back then you kind of almost needed to be where you had to be in the it game. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but luckily, you know, going back to New York, I was kind of able to um, 
carve out a little niche for myself. Yes. And so um, I just started to concentrate on like things that I sort of liked, you know? There was a point where like, like even for instance, like with like, like shoes, uh -huh. I just decided one day, I was like, I just want to wear half cabs again. You've always mm -hmm. had great shoes. Hell yeah. In all your footage. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Dude, you... Yeah. Only I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, the only time like, I thought you had like kind of whack shoes was those crazy Vans with a thick stripe. That, that's interesting yeah. because I, I was definitely super self-conscious of yeah. those. And uh, yeah, and that's a weird period for Vans. Yeah. But there was... I don't know what it was that I was like, I might be able to pull this one off. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to pull this one yeah. off. You know, you get, I just remember those ones being like, because I'm a little weird on him. I thought you were going to say the Duffs. Oh, the uh, the Super 8s? Was that what they were called? Yeah. yeah those were the, the web. Those were, yeah. Those oh, were, yeah. You those, did rock those. Those were a little you wacky. You made those look good, though. Yeah, I, you did. Thank you. And yeah. I appreciate that. Because yeah. that was a kind of like, I was, uh, you know, a potential risk as well. <laughs> well, you're the, I saw, you're the first person I saw in a video wearing the DC boxers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I immediately went and bought those shoes because I watched you oh, in a wow. foreign one. But when, uh, you know, and it's funny because when you look back on those DC boxers, they're pretty gross. Yeah, they're but they're gross. a bit. Yeah, yeah, but they're they, they're big. I shouldn't yeah. say they're gross, but they're just large shoes. It's mm. almost like a DC. And this is a disservice. It was a cinder block in your foot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a disservice to 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 say this, but it's almost like a D three. With not too much design aspect on it. Right. I mean, it wasn't as crazy. Right. But, it wasn't as right. crazy. Yeah. But it's a DC version of a D three. Yeah. yeah. Like a big yeah boxy shoe. Dude, those right. rubber eyelets were so tough to like get the lace through. Them. Oh yeah, that's right, dude. Yeah. Somebody somebody's mentioned the other day to me that uh, that they admired uh, mine and Huff's shoelace. Uh, how flat they were yeah flat shoelaces <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Oh, would you you mean the would you rock the big ones i, I would flat i no, would just, just they were they his laces weren't I always, twisted or anything like right. that i was, uh, I was commenting on your laces some dude That's fish insane. eye dude yeah, but, <laughs> i mean i guess so yeah i'm not i'm not really looking but at i always but laces. having said that uh you know i i definitely took great care in yeah putting my laces okay. in because right? i knew that it that it that, that there was a there was a there was a you know it had an effect. Yeah. And, and I always was super self-conscious of looking down at my shoes and my grip tape. Yep. Oh, and really? So, so same thing with the boards. Like I haven't gripped a board differently in probably like 20 some, some odd years. What do you do? Just flat black? No. The whole? So oh, what do I do is I take the sheet. Yep. I cut it into four equal okay. squares. Remember the like remember World, World used yeah. to have yeah, their yeah, little yeah, packs yeah, yeah. of grip tape? And yep. I, t I take the four squares, I cut them down, and yep. then I flip it so that it's a factory. A Straight factory line, flip. yeah. Uh, and, uh, oh. Yeah, so. oh, so you need those four breaks I, in the board. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I if I somebody handed me like a board that was already gripped and you was couldn't like, do it, I wouldn't set it up. You don't want like a grizzly bear on your grip tape or, <laughs> no, or any, no. Okay. No offense to grizzly bear. I I'm just, just saying. I can't have just, any cut no, out. No camo certain, grip tape. No. Is there no. a certain way that you line it up though? Like is your well, the same first line you same way every time. So like the line in between the bolts or something like that. So oh, it the, goes first sheet goes all the way to the second you know the bottom bolts of uh -huh. the front truck. Yeah. yeah. Sheet goes right underneath there. And just hugs the bolts. Yeah. Then it's the two, and then the 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 like the the third of the back of the tail. Which you gotta okay. watch out because when you're when it's that close to the bolt, then it starts popping up when yes. you're putting the bolt on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. But I, that's I interesting. You know, yeah, yeah. 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 But I'm very uh, I'm very meticulous and particular yeah. okay. with my uh, board setup. I, I had a friend uh, one a long time ago. He scraped a a, a cookie onto my grip tape, and dude, it like destroyed me well, okay. <laughs> I, I used to as a joke but we used to do that too when you take the end of the board, board yeah. and oh, swipe man. it yeah yeah, yeah. what about dick. what about dudes when they put a sticker on your board and then they take the razor blade oh. and slice it up into like oh, a, so you can't, yeah. so you can't, can't get it off oh, yeah it's like putting it's like people yes, do that yeah. for their license that's registration the, that's yeah. the equivalent of like getting drunk at a party and somebody marking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, funny. But, uh, so what happened after mad circle oh, so, so, you, right, you moved back to new york so mad circle goes Kaput. You know, yeah, yeah, belly up. Yeah. Oh, well, I shouldn't say belly up, but they pulled the plug. Justin they, pulled the plug yeah. on it. Um, and uh, yeah, I ended up moving back to New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's actually not true. I had moved back to New York well before Mad Circle went under. Gotcha. But uh, I moved basically like I moved uh, to 108th Street uptown. Mm -hmm. This was probably like 98. Oh, okay. Uh, around there, 90. Yeah, 98. Yeah. Um, I had moved back, and you know, I had I got a car bought a car and i drove it out to sf so i had a, there was a point in time where i had a car in sf which oh. is crazy to me 
But then I drove the car back. In fact, I think me, Rob Welsh, and Nikhil Thayer, and freaking, I think Tony Mirana, were Damn. in the car driving back. To, drove back to New York. From, uh, yeah, from SF to New York. Wow. And so we drove back. I, I, I might be wrong about that, but definitely t- Tony Mirana was definitely in there at some point. Huh. And uh, yeah, we drove back to New York, and I ended up just staying there. Got a place with some people on 108th Street. And lived uptown, and back then, the the Upper West Side and the Upper East Side were again, like I said, different animals. Sure, like you didn't really go past 110th Street, and it got you know once you went past 110, it was like kind of crazy. Mm, okay, but you know whatever, it's all you know relative sure. to the to the experience or whatever. But uh, yeah, so I ended up just staying there, and then I kind of got I was skating. And hanging out downtown a lot. And 108th Street is like way uptown. So mm-hmm. when you get into like taking trains at night, it's just like, dude, you could be waiting for a train for like, oh, again, yeah. this is all like pre, you know, like phones. Yeah, and, the train's yeah. coming in point ten minutes. <laughs> right. Or whatever. But um, yeah, so I just got sick of it. So I lived up there for a little while. I ended up moving to Chinatown. Okay. And then uh, I had a spot in Chinatown, kind of by that LES park, mm-hmm. hmm. and this was like '99 ish. Are you filming and doing stuff? I'm doing in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, oh, so, so, so. It's no board sponsor. No, no, no. I f- forgot about oh. that. So uh, I saw Infamous. Yeah. So yeah. So I read for Infamous, Infamous, and this was like, dude, Infamous back then was like. It was weird because wasn't it run by people who don't skate? Definitely. Yeah. Well, Ben Liversedge, like, kind of kind of was like Spear. the street boss yep. you know he like kind of ran the like sh- the the the, the kind of like uh not the inner workings of it but he was like kind of the face of it okay and mike hernandez and ryan hickey also wrote for it uh i believe ryan hickey wrote wasn't for it. infamous part of a magazine up in vermont yes huh. what was it called it was uh it was called a uh, famous some of that or no no it was called like um Yes, it's a weird story. And then yeah. decided to get into the skateboarding. I dude, I don't know. Industry. I don't so, know, but so bizarre. but basically, it was this dude who di- who was from Vermont. Yeah, and his name was Mike. I'm just trying to think of the name, like of the magazine. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So there was a bunch of other dudes that like funded the magazine. Okay, and they were like money people. Mm-hmm. You know, there was one dude in particular. I can't think of his name either, but uh, and then there was like the guy who kind of like ran the kind of like brand. Okay. And he was definitely didn't skate, mm. and the money guy definitely didn't skate. Um, and so one day I was like, I think I was at like Flushing Meadows or something, and I saw Gio Moya, mm-hmm. and he was riding an infamous board, and I and and I had been buying boards. You know, there's I don't know if I told this story once where I have that photo grinding out the the rail on. You were on the guy board, yeah. I'm riding the guy board. Yeah. So every basically every shape. And I've told this story. Uh, yeah, I think the, it's Bob in the Bob shirt. shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, Geo's Geo's board. I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, this is kind of a sick board. It's super flat." Hmm. And I was super into girl stuff. Okay. Because it was flat stuff, yep. you know, and a conservative, you know, small shape, small width. And I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, this is almost like a girl board." Hmm. And I was like, "Where'd you get this? Like, what is this?" And yeah. he's like, "Oh, this is infamous." And I knew that it was Ben's brand or whatever. Um, and so I was like. I was like, could you get me one of these? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. Now I don't have to buy a board. Right. You know? And um, so I set one up and I was like, man, I think I could kind of do this. Wasn't there a brand called Freedom that like Infamous kind of spawned from? I don't know about that. That might have been, I'm, trying to think of, I'm still trying to figure out the name of the magazine. <laughs> yeah. So I got, a, I started getting boards from Infamous. Okay. And then um, Geo hooked you up. Geo hooked it up, but I was already friends with Ben, and you know, once I went in there, like it was like it was totally cool. They there were they were almost like what, like you, you know, yeah, like sure. hype. Do you want yeah, to yeah. skate? Sure. So, um, in fact, in terms of like boards that I wish I had collected, I wish I saved my first infamous graphic. Oh yeah. Because now, in retrospect, I really liked the graphic. It was this. It was this uh, series called Origins. Okay. And I think Jamal had one. Jamal wrote for mm-hmm. Infamous, yes. and Ben had one, and I think I don't know if Ryan and Mike had them too, but uh, it was a pretty dope graphic, and um, I just wish I had one. So I, I wish. So I do have the first Mad Circle Pro board. Right. I have the first um, 
you know, I had my first traffic board. Okay. Because that was later. Later, right. Uh, I had my first enjoy board. Mm -hmm. But I don't have the infamous board, hmm. which I wish I had. I, I don't, it would have completed the set. It would have completed the set, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'll ever find that board. Hey, you never know, man. You never People know. People have shit. People have weird shit. Yep. And they're yeah, willing yeah. to give it up. People may even see this and be like, I have that board. That's true. Yeah. You that's know? true. It's out in the, it's a, it's out it's there. Out the garage. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's actually, there was this poster that I thought would have been long. There was an image of a, uh, that we did a poster for a, um, a tour, an infamous tour. Okay. And I, Ryan G shot the photo and I was like, hey, do you have this, do you have this slide? And I think it's since resurfaced, but huh. some dude hit me up and was like, hey, I have that poster. And I See? Was like, oh, shit. There you See? go. But it had my signature on it. And I was almost like. Dude, I ruined it by signing it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be rad if you had it yeah. with your signature yeah, yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, interestingly, uh, speaking about Look Back Library, when, oh, yeah. I, when I went there, uh, he started pulling out these, these the covers, you know, how he has people sign covers. Yep. And he pulled out a cover, and it was freaking addressed to Dan Wilkes. Yep. And I was like, dude, that is insane. 99, like Dan Wilkes getting huh. slap magazines. People, yeah, people send this but guy. I actually have my slap cover addressed to me. Which is that's kind of amazing. A, a kind of right. cool. That's like, wow, cool. That yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Random question. Do you ever talk? Do you ever hear about uh, Ben Leversedge anymore? I asked about him recently, and uh, you know, going back a few years, I think he was like up in Vermont, but I could be totally wrong mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, he had injured his knee, oh. and he kind of like. I know that that was. I mean, he's an incredible skateboarder. Hell yeah! But I think that that really affected his, um, like you know, yeah. just his his, his uh, presence in skateboarding, mm -hmm. and he just kind of like you know dipped out. Oh, okay. Huh. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I was never super close with Ben. Ben dipped to SF when Huff and Keenan dipped out. Dipped out. out. Oh, okay. Know? And Chris Keefe went out there, but yeah. Chris Keefe came Were they back. Doing fun and all that. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting brand. Uh, but I was never super close with Ben. We had skated to get together like at random like, sure. intervals, but never super close. That was like the Manhattan kind of like Queens click, gotcha. you know, um, Keith and Chris and Peter and Ben. Mm -hmm. Even though Ben was from, uh, I think Ben was from Long Island. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah. But uh, like I said, you know, by the time I had kind of like moved into the banks, skating the banks all the time, those guys were already there. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. and then Infamous. You got on right away? Yeah, it was Gave almost like... Gave you a board like, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And it was almost like... I was almost like kind of sketched out. I was like, what am I doing? You know? Did it make you feel weird that these guys who own right the away? company didn't... Wait, what did you say? Did they give you a contract right away? No, no contract. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was definitely I mean, they, weird. They, they, but these guys don't even know about skating and here you are. There was an upside to that and a downside to okay. that. Okay. Okay. Because basically what was happening is that you could have them make a really bad decision. Absolutely. But the good thing about that is that then you could go in there and you could tell them why it was a bad decision and they would actually listen to you. And what they need to do yes. correctly. And so, to a certain extent with skate with with like a skateboard company, mm -hmm. you could watch a skateboard company make a bad decision, but because they have their own experience in skateboard world, there's a there's a rationalization sure. there. Yeah. And so with non skateboarders, you know, you could uh, you could mold them. You could teach them. Yeah. There you go. You know. Yeah. And so that was the good thing, but there was you know, in, in that case with Infamous, and I don't want to say that they made hundreds of wrong decisions, but there was, you know, you definitely had to be policing everything. Especially when I got in there, because I was like, okay, this brand Infamous is kind of a weird name, yeah. I, but what I really liked was the INFMS mm -hmm. aspect of yeah. it, uh, using that moniker because it was like you know, and then the you know it kind of was like the the Mob Deep thing. Yeah, there, there was a, there was an early blossoming marketing campaign there, yeah. and I you know I don't want to say that I saw it and you know, but I definitely started to go in there and and be like you know that Infamous video like I definitely like. You know, I was in the studio yep. editing that thing. Oh, wow. you know, okay. You know, I had to. Your song I was, was pretty sick. I was, oh, yeah. I was yeah. with, yeah. I was with a, a person who was actually pushing the buttons. Mm -hmm. But I was right. like, cut that there, pull that out. You know, yeah. blah blah blah. I, you know, directing it. And um, at that point, I mean, Ben was still involved, and he had started the brand. But once, once I got involved, I was just like, 
I have a sneaking suspicion that this thing could kind of go in this direction. Mm -hmm. And that infamous part was kind of like, it was an obscure video. It was pre DVD, mm -hmm. yeah. I believe it came yeah. out on VHS only. And so there was an element to like that, you know, because the way we consume videos now, it's like, you know, I mean, shit, it's on your phone, yeah. Instagram, whatever. Sure. It's not even, it's not even YouTube anymore. Um, but there was, you know, and then you get into distribution. Oh yeah. And small distribution. And the thing with Infamous is that people will call it underground, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's just poorly. Small. Distributed. Small, yeah. Yeah, small. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for whatever reason, uh, you know, and it's, it's funny because if you look at the trajectory of like where my skateboard career was going, mm -hmm. And especially in retrospect, the idea of going from like a, a brand that was distributed by Giant, okay? Yeah, which is know, massive. Big. Which is and massive, worldly, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To going to Infamous, I, I don't even know what I could have gotten on at that at when Mad Circle went under. I was just like, what is there? Yeah. You know, was Zoo uh, even an option? Definitely not an option. Not, not for me, no. because, because Zoo was going in this like, you know, also like to, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a New Yorker. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and and it's it's good. It's 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 great that they have their own you know thing. But right. I'm looking at Zoo and I'm like, damn, no one on no one on Zoo is even from New York. Sure. Yeah. You know, like it's like you know whoever and blah blah blah, and that's fine. But I was just like, one of the things that I was hyper conscious of is like. If you're if you're gonna do a brand, the last thing you want to do is is branded around a geographic location, right? Yeah, because you're end, you're gonna end up like not being able to satisfy or fulfill the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. and New York is a heavy thing. You know, it's like man, it's like that. You. Don't. I mean, do a lot of people buy into the New York thing? Absolutely, absolutely. It is it is a massive branding right. gold mine. Yeah, you know, yeah there's yeah. so much rich iconography and you know that's yeah. that's all well and good yeah um but that was definitely i was i was like i saw through that whole thing <laughs> okay. very early on right. you know and, and 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 that's going back to like the original crew with like you know i mean supreme has that problem now to a certain extent okay you know it's like supreme in la like i i, I saw i saw the beginning of supreme in new york with all new yorkers there yeah. you go you know yeah and so it's weird for me to look at like Supreme LA. Yeah, sure. Or whatever. Supreme yeah. freaking Japan Phoenix. Or you know, <laughs> it's just a Supreme it's, Phoenix. You know, it could be coming soon. You never know. It's going to be. It's, yeah. Supreme Missouri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, so, so m the way I like, you know, crafted my sort of like whatever, mm -hmm. the way I, the way I learned, I was very like, uh, I don't want to call it again, naive, but I was like, oh yeah. This is this. This is that. You know, okay. it's like this. This goes with this. You know, it makes sense. Right. And once things started to get like a little bit wild in its like appendages, I was like, I I became like a, I don't want to say um, a curmudgeon, because that's that's unfair. Possibly. You okay. Know, I, I think if anyone spends time with me, that they they find that I'm not. You know, but I'm a skateboarder. I have like a, I have a rigid set of ideals. As you know? we all do. Yeah, right? as we all yeah. do. And you're and you're also very much entitled to your own opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, and the great thing about skateboarding and being a skateboarder is that you're not and even if you're a pro skateboarder, you're not necessarily just that. You're also a consumer of the culture. Yeah, uh, totally. And so and that's one of the fun things about skateboarding. And that goes back to like the idea of like graphics and like t shirts and mm -hmm. stickers. You're mm -hmm. you you are a consumer. You take part in not only the act of skateboarding, but the act of consuming the culture, watching videos and, and talking shit yeah. and having your own opinion. There you and, go. And, and, yeah. and, and mimicking a style that you like, yeah. uh, doing a trick that you like, you know? And that's the real magic of skateboarding is that it allows all of those things into one packaged yeah. club. Sure. Yeah, really, you know? Oh, yeah. And as you go back in time, the pool gets smaller and smaller and more intimate and more, you know. More, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and so there's definitely like a something that bothers me when I see the culture being inflated and uh, stepped on is the wrong term, but just uh, 
abused, mm-hmm. so to speak. When I see people not paying attention to the culture, right. it tends to bother me. And luckily, I've gotten to the point where I'm just like, you know what? I don't really give a shit. Just gonna say fuck it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't say fuck it, but I just, I just to a certain extent, I, I, I stopped just consuming the mass amounts of stuff that was being output. You know, it's out, it's out of your control. It's out of all of our control. Yeah. we to, can't well, do to a certain extent. You could you could do stuff. You're not going to control it, right? You can you can voice your opinion on it. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely going to get um, a, a certain you know faction of like you know, backlash, so mm-hmm. to speak, or, or somebody's going to just counter your opinion with their own. Um, right. But I've always tried to like, I've always tried to have like a rationale, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that's whatever. That's just me. You don't like the kids editing their Instagram videos of trap music? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't turn you on. It's, huh? a, it's, it's, a... it's just, you know, I mean... <laughs> That's that's a whole nother kind of thing. I mean, sure, there's pl- you know, and th- you could go back to the beginning of time with skateboard videos and the music that people choose. Right, yeah. right. Um, are there any dudes now that are the uh, skaters now that you're into, like any new generation? I, uh, I like some of the, uh, I like some of the vert guys. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. But okay. uh, in Jim terms Wilkins. of, well, Jimmy Wilkins is uh, he's an interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, who I like is um, that Chris Cope dude. Is that his name, Chris Cope? Yeah, I think I know what you're talking the about the pool guy. Yeah, oh, wow. uh, I, and 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 I shouldn't say that I, and no, again, no offense or disservice, but I shouldn't say I like him. Mm-hmm. But I, uh, you know, I've seen clips and I'm like, wow, that's a really sick, uh, attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's all it, it's. It's really a, the dude attacks shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, there were yeah. So I've seen clips of vert skaters on uh, skating vert. Uh, but I will say this about new vert is that the ramps are much bigger. Yeah. And so I am personally into watching like old vert ramps, Mm -hmm. you know, like I like, um, I like a lot of the Texas ramps, you know, the, the, um, a lot of the Dallas stuff or the, uh, Houston park. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like Mount Trashmore footage. And so when you see these dudes flying through the air, there's definitely an art form to it, but there's also an art form to, uh, you know, doing that stuff on a smaller, you know, well, we're old nose, style, yeah, yeah. old style vert ramp. Yeah, yeah, no Big nose wheels. Yeah, I also love uh, Del Mar footage. Mm-hmm. So I really love Del Mar footage um, and Pipeline because mm-hmm. those by that time, by the time I had gotten into skateboarding, those were the only two like concrete part. And yeah. don't get me wrong, Kona was there, blah blah blah. Right. But those were like the two parks, especially Del Mar. When Del Mar would would air the um, or have contests mm-hmm. and it would fill the whole uh, around the around the, mm-hmm. around the keyhole yeah. with the stands mm-hmm. and there was people and banners and you're like looking at this colorful mass of just you know fans yeah. Yeah. you know like yeah. just r- ravage you know um, just rabid fans. Have you ever been to the uh, the Vans comedy, comedy pool? pool? I have. Park? But have yeah. you been to the uh, contest? No. You would love it. I would freaking love it. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I, believe me, if I had the ability to travel and go to those things, yeah. I would do it in a heartbeat. I want to go to um I want to go to SkaterCon super bad. The hell you is know that? what SkaterCon no. is? Oh, it's, in it's, Arizona? It's, yeah, in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to that. What is this? So it's like a Comic Con? It's kind of like skaters? a Comic Con Comic Con for skateboarders. Really? Yeah. And so you have like, heard of this. This isn't it's not in the loop. I'm not in the loop. I'm not in the loop either, but I saw it and it was like one of the things that just like popped into my like feed. But what do you do? I don't know, you freaking gawk at like Lester Kasai or something. Yeah, they just oh. say like board swaps and whatever else like yeah 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 it's just yeah. it's just that it's just that periphery Collectors sort of like yeah. Oh, yeah. oh gotcha but they also okay. have like pro old pros that will show up and, oh you know i'm su- i'm just super into like that experience you yeah, know? yeah yeah, like, yeah. Reli- sort of like reliving like my going go. into this into the um into the bicycle shop and looking at the the board yeah. rails, you know right but um hmm. yeah so i really love old skateboard graphics yeah. i love old scenes you know, um, unfortunately, there's so much of it. There's so much of the the sort of like middle of that scene that was not presented by the magazines. So you do have to go digging yeah, through right. things to get the stories and get like the 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 like sort of uh, the 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 stories are the best. 
You know, oh, yeah. when you hear people tell stories about whatever, yeah, it is like so, the meaning behind of a skateboard graphic or whatever it might be. Yeah. What's that? Like the meaning behind of like a, a certain Dude, board graphic or whatever. Oh, told me mm-hmm. that not only did he world, he name World Industries, but he did the first SMA uh, graphic. Oh, the, really? The logo graphic, the one you know, the Vallely sticker with yeah, the yeah. you know with the the logo behind yeah, it, the, like points he, to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. He did that. Super rad. And I think I had probably heard that, and it's probably common knowledge to any like you know seasoned collector or like historian. But um, that was super rad. I figured mm. it would have been like Jeff Hartzell or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Who's from Jersey, by the way? Right. Yeah. It is interesting to hear the little. Ni- I love behind the scenes shit. Oh man, it's if you, it, it, in a movie, behind the scenes, TV, yeah, yeah, yeah any yeah. any behind the scenes yeah. thing, yeah, yeah. I, I'm 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 a sucker for. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah, movies and TV are interesting, uh, but you know, I just use that as an example. Yeah, yeah, no, of just know, behind know. the scenes. Yeah, I know. Um, you and know. It, you can, yeah, you can definitely like tennis. I'm sure there's John McEnroe stories yeah. for days. Sure, you know, like, yeah. sure. Really interesting. Skateboarding, though, especially when you're involved in it, is, yeah. and you know the exactly, especially. Especially when you get into the like, if you are ever have the opportunity to become a sponsored or pro skateboarder, mm-hmm. you then are now starting to kind of package your own experience and compare it to like, you know, what it was kind of like, right? You know, for these other, especially like pretty, you know, there's there's like really crazy groundbreaking shit that happens in skateboarding to this day, for sure. And you have to now like think like, damn, dude, that was. Uh, you know, that's the other thing. When you look at spots, that's a great one. Oh, yeah. When you look at a spot, you see a spot in a magazine and you see the trick and then you go and look at it in real life. Yeah. Whole yeah. different. Yeah. Like, what the hell is this dude thinking? Yeah. 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 Uh, and that is, that happens quite often. Yeah. Oh. Even, even, with any, even with anything, you're just like, wow, that, you know. Yeah. How you, the fuck do you do that? How there's a big crack that? here and there's exactly. a here. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's crowded out street. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've had people definitely, like, comment on the stuff that I skate. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, man, like, when I saw that in real life, I was like... And 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 I'm not jumping down shit. But, you know, what part of, like, what I got into was just just going down different streets and just, you know, just looking for, like, little nooks and crannies. But then again, you know, I also came out of it... For instance, uh, Ron Chapman skates a spot in Rubbish Heap, Mm -hmm. and it's this crusty-ass parking lot, and it's like two levels of like parking lot, and there's a bank with a white bar on it. And I'm just like, man, that is such a rad-looking spot. And, you know, there's certain spots that you'll see, and you're like, this obviously needs this trick done on it. There you go. But, uh, you know, part of what I loved about the density of New York City, and especially, you know, getting into... The, the vast, ex- and LA is the same thing. Like mm. it just goes for miles it's and miles. Endless. But, um, you know, part of like the thing with LA is that you, and that's the great thing is that you can have the car and there's plenty of spots that could just discovered by car. But you're not on your board every day. Right. But that's the beauty of the different skate scenes that popped up in like the Huntington crew. Oh yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. then they bring, you know, blah, blah, blah over. And then that person starts skating there. Mm-hmm. And then that person starts interpreting the different spots. And then the, the peop the tricks that will, that people were doing, Oh yeah, you know, and it's like, they bring this set of tricks over to like this, you know, realm. And then that pops up a whole, you know, sure. yeah. it's so sick. It's yeah. such an interesting, uh, organic, um, activity yeah right, you know? right nowadays it's obviously the video has obviously like revolutionized you know oh yeah going back into mm-hmm. like the video days no no pun intended but, <laughs> yeah. um, but, but i feel like your skating is more just organic and just kind of you just fl- go with the flow it looks like you're just skating down the street yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool yeah. i mean you know I'm i mean you literally not, i'm definitely not just skating yeah, down the yeah, street but yeah. you know i mean i i, I um I guess I took great care in the way I presented stuff because mm-hmm. there was, you know, I wouldn't film, any, I wouldn't film everything. And I, and I, and I, like I said, like watching guy skate, yeah, I always aspired to like, and I was never that style of skateboarder. Mm. And, uh, but I always like thought like, how, what would guy do here? You know, okay. because I always thought that guy had the best trick selection. Yeah. He yeah. always had the best trick selection. And then just the way he looked, I mean again, going back into like dress, sure. the way he like 
the, the even just the um the color schemes and oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Everything know? about him. Yeah. yeah. Uh very, very uh enigmatic. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I just I I I tried to like and to be honest, you know what I was doing when I would be skating down the street is I would be looking for the spot where I could just skate unobstructed. You know, I was looking for the schoolyard. I was looking for Lockwood in New York City. And I, and I never, ever really found it. But, uh, you know, like I said, the idea of that was was very heavy in my in my head. So you, you know? were you were well thought out with your skating. Yeah. Well, at least the presentation. Like the pre when it when it got into me, like presenting what my part was going to look like. Sure. And it, interestingly enough, and I've told this story as well, um, is that when the Mad Circle video came out. I was not involved in any of the editing process. For Five Flavors? And yeah. And you, so knew, you didn't know anything until you saw it? Nothing. Wow. And even FTC part too. Uh, oh. I, I didn't know anything about the editing process. Um, and, you know, and not to... Not but this to, was kind of early on though. With well, I was also removed. You know, like okay. I said, I was not in the... I was not living in those... In the bubble? Right, yeah, in the bubble. And not to not to be a repeat of that Bob shirt thing, but it's like once I've realized that I could like kind of curate, mm -hmm. I was like, all right, you can also curate by choosing what you film. Absolutely, right. yeah, you, know, yeah. you can curate your trick selection, um, and that's super important. You know, it seems like nowadays kids. And you just want to throw everything out there. They, well, they 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 you know my there's no filter. My yeah. friend had mentioned that. There, you, there's definitely no filter, which is good and bad because mm -hmm. skateboarding to a certain extent. I think it needs a filter. It does. Mm -hmm. It absolutely does. Um, but essentially what kids do now is they try to film a trick on everything. Oh, yeah. for sure. On everything. So you go, there's like, you know, and there's, and, and, and the other thing is that they try to film like, and, and don't get me wrong. There's really incredible skateboarders out there that are very well curated. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of ingredients in the pot, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, but to a certain extent, to be able to make it in today's sort of industry, you have to be able to do anything and everything on anything and everything, yeah, you know, because if you don't, then you're getting into missing being in the cycle, being like seen, yeah, you know, there's no there's no real. Everything is moving so rapidly. There's no if you if you um, if you try to be unseen, you will absolutely be unseen. Oh yeah, yeah and for it's a, sure. And sure. Th at this point, it's a disservice. You know, I always say less is less is more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But at this point, it's like you really can't afford that anymore because yeah. things are moving so rapidly, which is great for business. Yeah, but it it kind of it tends to. Um, and you know, I'm I'm like old and out of touch, but you know, it it it, it, it there's a possibility that it is um, kind of watered down oh. the culture. Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. like I go to the skate park, like, and I'm looking around. Uh, when I went to El Sereno, yep, I was looking around and I was like, "Damn, these dudes here," uh, and I say dudes. There was actually girls there yeah, too, yeah, a lot no. of girls, and I was like. These people don't look like skateboarders to me. <laughs> sure. They don't look like right. skateboarders. They look like um, hobbyist is the wrong term, but it's just so freaking accessible. Oh yeah. Now and that person who doesn't look like a skater is probably doing kickflip back tails down the hubba. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. You're just like, yeah, what yeah. is going on? Yeah, yeah. It's really a really interesting phenomena. Um, but when I was, you know, growing up, it was like you could just look at. Forget the, even the shoes. They didn't even need to have Vans on. You could just look at the scratch marks on the shoe. Oh, oh, yeah. 100%. For sure. Or the style of shoe, yeah. you know? And yeah. it was like... Or just their their dress. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, that's that's in, an important part of that, of that era of skateboard, mm -hmm. you know, world. Uh, and I'm not saying that I necessarily have a problem with people not looking like skateboarders, but it, it, the, the mindset is also like tweaked out now, you know? The, yeah. the, 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 the synapse configuration has been <laughs> the synapse configuration. separated. Yeah. Well, now um, to me, it's almost like more is less. More is less. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All these fucking people are... Anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's a whole it's a whole thing. And you and you know, you know, it's like when you start talking about the past mm -hmm. and the present. Yeah, it's like you definitely walk a like narrow line between. Well, I always think. I mean, talking to everybody that comes on this show too, and I think it's. I mean, even for myself, it's like everybody from their own era wants to preserve that era. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I love how Lance has such a um, uh, an admiration, and he is. You know. If he wasn't talking about the dudes that he looked up to, yeah, you wouldn't really. That they would be almost lost to uh, time. Yeah, you know. So, Which so he's insane. doing. He's doing a great service yeah. to skateboard mm -hmm. uh, history and the culture. Well, that's what, that's what we do with this show, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, Bobby? Yeah, yeah. You know that's why I say, like, with all the new generation, I always hope that they respect their the guys that did it before them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? You There's know? a lot of kids that do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you see some, some of these kids, 13 years old, and they know who you are, and they know about your video parts, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, that's amazing. That yeah. is amazing. That's amazing. It and other really kids is. are... Other, 22 year old kids are like i don't know who the hell yeah, you yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not me in general i'm just saying <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you know yeah uh, it's bizarre man <laughs> let's go back infamous yeah after infamous traffic yeah right traffic, right, traffic right, right. was a great that video you guys did um the track it enjoy then traffic or oh it was enjoy yeah, yeah. i was gonna say oh, was enjoy it? for yeah. sure wait how long did infamous last with me with you uh very actually this is more of an infamous we should talk about is oh go ahead those what? cheap skateboards they made oh yeah 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 so they basically sold your name so well no i i don't know i never i never found out the story right never found out the story well, but but what i speculate what happened is that when infamous went out of business this mm -hmm. is the this is the most logical thing that i can kind of you know whatever wrap your head around yeah, yeah. yeah. being that there was and i don't want to call those guys sketchy mm -hmm. but I can only assume that when Infamous went out of business, okay. they sold their back stock. Yeah. Mm. You know, they liquidated. Um, and so I think what happened is they liquidated their back stock probably to some toy thing in China, yeah. hmm. wherever they could just get it off to. Or it's possible that they sold a licensing thing. Mm -hmm. Because I know, I know there was also a Jamal Williams, like, bootleg oh, really? thing that I had seen. Yeah. And so Jamal had it early on as well. Mm -hmm. And I definitely saw one and uh but mine just for whatever reason stuck around and it wasn't even like graphics that we had ever done. Yeah. It was just my name. Where yeah. are you seeing all this? You can go down to the boardwalk and probably walk into one of those random there's a bob bobby pulio you never saw those no oh dude, dude i don't think i did either they're embarrassing uh, yeah it's it's really <laughs> they're yeah, still around to this day oh, yeah. to this day with your name on it yeah what and it's like it's like balsa wood skateboard yeah. it's like literally like even worse than like nash boards when we were what kids. can you do about this this is no insane idea. to me i have no idea no you can, you're not even getting any money out of this well I, it just says your last name on it right no it says my full name oh it does yeah. <laughs> what it says, yeah, it's really wild <laughs> please tell me that you get a check every no month. No, no, no no nothing no I, I don't even know who manufactures it i looked i tried to look in the early days of this happening i tried to i never i've definitely held one but I've never had Did you anybody keep it for your collection. <laughs> no, 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 I never had anybody like have any type of like you know know where it came where from. it came from. Oh. They were just like I bought it in the store, blah blah blah. So um, so I think what happened is that either they at the guys at Infamous either sold a licensing thing, mm -hmm. or they liquidated back stock to a potential manufacturer that had the boards. Had the backstock, the actual infamous boards, mm -hmm. possibly sold those and just went into production with whatever was written on the boards. You know, it's possible wow. that there was a combination of a licensing thing as well. But once infamous went under, it was just I I, I don't know I don't know where those That's guys insane. went or whatever. And I don't know how it. You know, like I said, I've never found out exactly what had happened. Huh. But uh, early on, I tried to find out who the manufacturer where it was coming from sure and i could deduce that it was coming from china yeah, yeah. you know right right or taiwan or where, where, wherever the hell it was mm -hmm. and um but i could never find it was like this cryptic like it was just like three letters and it was like some kind of like distributor and i saw it on a website i think once and i was just like the whole thing was in like chinese and i was no just like no oh, way what? <laughs> what? So, yeah Crazy. what are you gonna do you're gonna go into like one of those stores downtown and you're gonna be like 
Where'd where you, you get this? Can yeah. you get me the information? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, mean, you I guess you could. You yeah. could. Yeah, you should. But even if I do, then what? I, I issue Go ask them for a check. They're still coming out? I, I don't know. I, people send me, send me photos to this day. I'll get a photo of that like wow. shark board. And it's wow. like, dude, I saw one, one, one time that had uh, lights around it. <laughs> freaking lit up. Somebody put ah! No, no, it, 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 you, you can, can buy it. You could like, buy it with lights. With a light. And wow. Buy a Bobby Polio lit up, yeah. light up board. So, uh, <laughs> so that's a phenomena, you know, and it's like uh, wow. another weird, like, That's aspect. depressing. I don't like that. It's it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, I try not to get depressed about it. Well, you know what I mean, though. It's but, like this company came; they literally sold your name yeah. to somebody else without your permission. I don't know who the hell buys that shit. Obviously, if they're making them, somebody's buying them. Yeah, right? maybe so. so. It's it's definitely an inch because you know think about it. Like mm -hmm. anybody in skateboarding that they could bootleg the damn name. It's me. <laughs> what? Listen, man, they love your video parts, no, bro. Yeah. It's, it's a weird thing. So that happened after you left Infamous. You found out about all that. That didn't happen until like later. Yeah. Pretty oh, much it, like, yeah, okay. it was like this weird, I think it was like two. Yeah, maybe it was like 2002 or 2003. Oh. I'll never forget the first time I saw one. My friend's girlfriend was a model and she had a job in China. She had a no. modeling job in China. She brought one back. No way. Holy and I was like, shit. It freaked me out. I was like, yeah. what? What? That's you know, what is this? Yeah. But um, yeah, so then enjoy. Yeah, how'd you get on enjoy? I got a call from Mark and... Uh, oh, MJ. Yeah, and, and, wow. and Jerry, I think they were both kind of like on the phone. Okay. And um, they hit me up. And, and so, okay, so, so the infamous video... Yeah considering it was like a small thing, it, it kind of became this like thing that you just got a glimpse of, mm -hmm. you know? And then uh, Jay Maldonado put out La Luz. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And that was another like weird kind of like thing. And then when the internet started, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when YouTube started, yeah. people would get this like, there was like early, you know, that part was online, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it became, um, it kind of just became this like, thing early viral video yeah <laughs> like well cult classic <laughs> just kind of right. like just kind of like a, a, a underground oh, yeah. yeah underground you know thing mm -hmm. and then um and then uh the static two thing came out oh yeah static two mm -hmm. that's then, right so that was like a kind of like and that was supposed to be like an underground video right but now we had the rise of like the independent video market yeah. mm -hmm. and so you know you had obviously dan wolf with his his projects yeah yep. But um, yeah, the Jay Maldonado one was kind of interesting because that was a truly like low budget mm. underground. Just homey thing. Homey. Yeah, right. it was kind of like a homey thing. Yeah. But he was also, Jay Maldonado was the filmer for Infamous. Mm -hmm. So we were, vi and, 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 and one of the things about New York is that there was not a lot of filmers there. So Jay having a video camera and like being willing to go out was like a truly like gift to the city. Right. Uh, but Dude, that place just spits them out. And How long were you on Infamous for, by the way? Again, two years. Gray, two gray years. area. Yeah, probably like. Yeah, two, I feel like every spot. It's like two, two, two years, years is yeah, like man. a you know what cutoff it, point. You know, there's there's uh, the same the same thing that happens with the filmer. Mm -hmm. Once you lose a filmer, it's you tough. lose a brand. Yeah. yeah. If you don't go back out to California and do that whole thing, right? You you know, but. Luckily, for whatever reason, I mean, I never quit skating. Yeah. And so I, I was like, you know, after Jay, it was this dude, Alex Musilli. Oh. He turned up in New York. Um, and so I filmed with him. Okay. And he was just down to like go out and skate. Oh. And so, um, yeah, like he, f dude, you know what's funny is I tried to get on Habitat. Oh, did you? Yeah. And I had this like whole like little nugget of footage that i sent to habitat huh. i was just like all right you know like east coast brand yeah what and happened they didn't i i, I wasn't i wasn't ha and it's good because i was not habitat material huh. but, but yeah luckily they kind of could have seen that i mean i don't yeah. think they yeah. said yeah. no seen yeah. i don't think yeah. they said no per se but it was just like they had their squad they, they had know. their click mm -hmm. yeah. and i was definitely not part of that click okay you know like i knew all those dudes but i was kind of like off doing my own thing hmm. and they were off doing their own thing yeah but here comes enjoy yeah but big it's, mj jerry yeah. sue and i don't, louis 
if I remember correctly, you know, the enjoy thing just came out of nowhere. Yeah. And I was just like, it wasn't like I was like settling. Like it wasn't like I really wanted to ride for Habitat mm -hmm. because like I said, like even after Mad Circle, the, the brands got, got real like kind of weird and like, right. you know, bleak is probably the wrong word, mm -hmm. but there was no stereo left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Habitat had the potential to be a stereo and it definitely was, you know, mm -hmm. but it was definitely in the alien camp and I'll be honest, like when I was a kid, I was not into Alien Workshop. No. You know, I was into GNS hmm. and I was into like the ampersand. But once Alien Workshop happened, I was already like, I was already super, I guess I sort of understood, like I said, I was into LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was into the LA thing. Interesting. And so, um, I don't know, it just, Alien was not LA. Yeah. And that's all well and good. Like Ohio is an interesting thing and mm -hmm. you know their whole their whole like dynamic was really interesting. Um but I was uh you know you know it was a really great video when it came out was Listen. That Listen video. Oh, oh yeah, Tim Dowling. Yeah, the, the yeah. Tim Dowling ep episode was great. Um, Thank you, bro. and I really <laughs> I, I, I really liked that. Uh that whole video it was yeah. really a breath of fresh air because what it did is it preserved the girl chocolate lineage there you go yeah, yeah. it, de it yeah. definitely was like this look into like the periphery of that scene sure and it had it had the appendages you know? yeah, yeah it was great yeah. um so that video was super cool uh when that came out but again like i said there was like you know i definitely was hyper conscious of like branding and the styles of skating and what went with what and like you know mm -hmm. obviously like like you know we were talking before like toy machine had its thing yeah yeah, yeah. and Literally. you know there was a toy machine skateboarder you know mm -hmm. uh there was definitely not toy machine skateboarders in new york right there was no dude that was like showing up to the banks and was like should have been on toy machine yeah because everybody was like kind of you know had had their like hyper hip-hop sort yeah. of thing did you think you fit on enjoy or no well, you know, I, I had t I had sort of talked about that in the enjoy, th whatever that thing did was for Transworld. N mm. Yes and no. Okay. You know, I I really liked what Mark was doing. Yeah. But interestingly, like as soon as I got on, Mark was left. He left. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. You know, but and it wasn't. I wasn't also like. I wasn't the type of person that was like, oh, I need to stay on this because I need this check. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was definitely into infam uh, into uh, Enjoy. Yeah. And I saw that it could potentially like, you know, it had a direction, mm -hmm. but in retrospect, it was a San Jose based entity. Yeah. And I didn't really, I didn't really understand from the get-go, I, I wasn't, that San Jose thing wasn't on my radar. Mm. So it kind of caught me off guard and I was like, all right, maybe this could work as like s something that I could kind of like, you know, be a part of. Yeah, yeah. But then there was the problem of me not wanting to spend time out there. Mm. Uh, and I say that, I, I guess that's not totally correct. I was willing to spend time out okay. there and I did. But when we would go skating, it was like, nah, I'm not skating. Nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, and also it was like, then you go through like the list of tricks that's already been done. Oh, God. You know, yeah. you're getting like, you're kind of like handheld to spots, you know, which is fine. But there's, that's not gonna you're, that's not gonna be a good video part for me you're all the spots you skate no one else skates you're yeah. really good at finding things that people don't skate i don't consider myself like a technically uh advanced or like you know good is the wrong word but i don't consider myself like i'm not like a trick person mm -hmm. i'm not like a flip flip in flip out dude mm -hmm. so i just i basically what i was doing is i was tr it's almost like it's almost like a like a a, a, a hip-hop producer Essentially, what you want to do is you want to find a sample mm -hmm. that no one's ever sampled before, yeah. and yeah. you want to put your mark on it. And then, if somebody bites your bites your sample, then they're known as like a sample biter, <laughs> <laughs> and, which is a stick, which is yeah. a, kind of a bad thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be like somebody that's not producing original content. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, in, especially in hip old hip hop. World. Oh yeah. Now yeah. it's like completely washed away yeah, sure. yeah so i had just kind of like 
you know, taken that sort of like thing, like, or even like graffiti writers, like if I can get up into that little spot, it's going to be real hard for somebody to come up and kind of like cross you out or whatever, whatever whatever it is, you know, go, you know, whatever. So that's kind of just like what, and I didn't have that, like, I wasn't like hyper conscious of it. It was just the way I like went about it. I was just Mm -hmm. like, this, this is an interesting thing. Oh yeah. You know, and this will make a good piece of, you know, content. Yeah. So, um, Worked beautifully. That probably. was always, that was always like my kind of thing. I was always just looking at, you know, architecture and furniture and just being like, oh, you can do this on that. There you go. You know, this, yeah. this kind of works into that. And so, you know, especially in New York City where it's so condensed yeah. and there's just different configurations. Philly is a whole nother animal. Sure. And Philly, in my opinion, is a much better configured city to skateboard on. There's like every single stair, door, con- you know, right. uh, okay. contraption there is. Huh. LA, dude, when you get out here and you see some of the stuff, you're just like, why in the hell did they build that? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like the Ron Chapman bar on top of the bank. It's right. like, what, why would you put a freaking bar there? Yeah. 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 And then there's another one down there. It's, it's Bizarre. really, yeah. it's really interesting. It's yeah. cool. So the enjoy thing, how long did that, how long were you on enjoy? For? I, I feel like it wasn't that long. No, it wasn't that long. Uh, like I said, it was like two years, two years. Two, two years. years. Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, well, you know, like I said, with, with getting into filmers, Yes. You know, you don't, I just didn't have access to a filmer after, after Alex dipped out. Okay. Alex like basically started taking a a work in the fashion industry, shooting photos. Okay. And, um, and that was kind of it. Did you leave enjoy or did they, because it was a bit of stalemate. Oh, was it? It was a stalemate. Um, basically it was like Matt Eversall, um, Took over the reins. Okay. And, you know, Jerry and Louie were obviously they left. there. Or no, Jerry Jerry was still there. Yeah, Mark, Jerry was Mark still left. Still yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, so Mark left. Matt Eversall took it over. Jerry and Louie. Um, and uh, it was just, you know, again, like, I just didn't want to. It's not that, I, like I said, it's not that I didn't want to go out there and skate stuff. Yeah. Because I had pl- plenty of great sessions out there. But did they want you to go out there? Like, they kind of I, I feel like you just were, you could have done your thing. I mean, you had no filmer, but you could have just. I could have I could have gone out there and like filmed the whole part in San Jose. Yeah. You know, I could have done that. Um, but that's not the part that I wanted to film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like when, you know, it's like, uh, it's like rick skating in barcelona when he was on uh new deal Mm -hmm. like you know and i I may may have said this somewhere before but it's like you don't want to see rick skating in barcelona you want to see rick oyola rick oyola you want to see him skating in philadelphia Philadelphia. there you go that's where his like best work happens yeah um and you know me being me i was just i was kind of like a little bit aware of that Mm -hmm. you know like you know what kind of product you're gonna get um with surroundings Mm -hmm. and so i just didn't i just didn't want to create that product you know i don't want it to be like a i I also don't i also didn't want it to be like a um you know any type of like low point especially if i knew what was possible with you know my sort of you know right my preferred environment Mm -hmm. um but uh you know also traveling dude is is kind of tough i mean it's not tough like if you have the if you have like the correct accommodations you know sure um and if you have a support network Mm -hmm. you know then it becomes easy i but i also had like a i don't want to say a life in new york but i had like my like routines and you know totally and at that point i was like not like a kid anymore yeah you know um but uh so yeah, so so basically I was like, look, I can film you a video part, but I want to do it here. And I also didn't like sort of, I, I wasn't really in touch with what those guys were doing. Mm-hmm. And they had like more or less like a whole video already wrapped up. Yeah. And here I am like, dude, I don't, I don't have any footage. Like oh, there's no yeah. filmer here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was basically like a stalemate. Hmm. And uh, interesting. And so it was like video deadlines coming up. You don't have a part, you know? And I was like, well, I don't have a filmer, so I guess I don't have a part, you know? 
which is fine. Yeah. You know, whatever. What video was that? That was uh That was Bag of Suck. Bag of Suck. Oh, yeah. Okay. Imagine if I had a part in Bag of Suck with all like San Jose footage. <laughs> It would just be weird. Yeah, you, would, you would stand out. Maybe, yeah, maybe sure. stand yeah. out. Maybe you know. But you know, like I said, going skating there, it was like, here we are at this kinked handrail. Well, I think, <laughs> yeah. No, try, yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do? But I think people. Well, they, you could have went to SF and filmed. That's a whole dude. That's a whole nother like project. Yeah. You know, when you skate a place, you 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 have to. You could have you could come to LA mm -hmm. and have somebody hold your hand and take you around all the spots and you'll skate dope stuff. Yeah. You'll skate amazing stuff and you probably film cool stuff. But to me what 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 a part is is like your and this is going to sound kind of wishy-washy and like whatever. But it's you are when you get into the nitty-gritty of something, you're learning your environment, you're you're studying it, you're you're kind of like you know you're curating yeah mm -hmm. and so I, i'm just not that type of skateboarder i'm not like a a, a, a chris has and we can just go skate worldwide yeah whatever <laughs> you know mm -hmm. i'm not like uh i'm not like a crusher type you mm -hmm. know uh type of dude it will destroy the spot yeah, yeah yeah so i have to almost like i have to develop a relationship with what you know sometimes sometimes it's like i'll go and skate a spot just to be feeling it you know mm -hmm. like just to just to be skating it like not filming you know yeah. whatever um and so and a lot of times too like i the, the, especially like ne you know as i get older too it's like i go i have to like not necessarily relearn stuff but it's like you have to get comfortable with skating a spot yeah and there's there's don't get me wrong there's people that can just oh yeah go and Kill crush it. absolutely you know? and that's that is what it's come down to but that's not the type of skateboarder I ever was. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like, you know, tried to basically develop, um, you know, a sense of like the environment and right. like, uh, you know, it's like, it's a, it's branding essentially mm -hmm. one-on-one. It's just branding, you know, mm -hmm. like I wanted to basically present this, this aesthetic, right. you know, this feeling. Well, and cellar, I think cellar doors. Cellar doors. That's, but I think, well, I think of you, I think of cellar doors. Yeah, but yeah. I, think that's I mean, what, a lot of people do. But that's what <laughs> your fans want too, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's like, you, you could go to San Jose and film a whole part, but, you know, it, it wouldn't be the same if you filmed it in New York. Exactly. You know, right, right, it just right. wouldn't be, Yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Right? It would be great. Yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't would, be yeah. the... And in retrospect, I should have, I should have probably taken that opportunity. Yeah. Because it might have been kind of interesting, mm -hmm. and I, and I'm not saying that I like definitely denied myself of that opportunity, mm -hmm. but it's just like for whatever it for whatever reasons it just never yeah. happened like that, you know? Because right. I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to be in San Jose for six months to film a video part. You right. Know? Uh, this is kind of weird to say to you in person, but I always just liked the way that you skated and I didn't necessarily had to be a certain spot. That's cool. It, it yeah, was yeah. like, but that's, if you would have skated in San Jose to me, it would have been great anyway, just because you, we'd always skate it the way that you skated it. Yeah. And no one skates like you. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it would have been cool to see that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and my I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, at, but from, yeah, I mean, for me, there was, I don't want to call it great discomfort in that, in that being in like a place like San Jose, because I definitely like, you know, I would go to like Barcelona and I was mm -hmm. like, man, this is incredible shit. But maybe in a place like San Jose there, you know, San Jose is definitely not Barcelona. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, there's like, there's uh, a lot of spots here though. In San Jose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was like looking at was just not like what, you know, yeah. mm. um, Barcelona is a crazy place, uh, you know, and now you get into like, tra you know, I mean, it all, a lot of times, like I said, it comes down to like a support network sure. budget, you know, oh, just yeah. have the ability to like, you know, do certain things. And if I had a budget, you know, to, to at that time period, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, you know, I would have, you know, chosen, you know, I don't know some, you know, I, I, maybe I would have gotten more creative, but I was just kind of doing what I, what I, could do with what i had right you know yeah. and so in new york it was a lot of like just retracing footsteps sure ex you know going into certain places into neighborhoods that i never checked out before and it you know that's you know 
and again, I don't want to like paint myself as like some like, you know, freaking trailblazer, but that shit takes a lot of time and energy to totally. like really you just search them out. Yeah, yeah, really to really unearth like some good stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that no one's ever seen before. That's that's kind of what I look for is yeah. like stuff no one's ever seen before. And then obviously, you know, as you get into that mode, there is a kind of, a kind of like um low hanging fruit element mm -hmm. you know if no one's ever seen the spot before you don't have to do exactly. like a crazy oh, yeah. trick yeah. <laughs> sure but then you set yourself up for the dude that comes Next. up behind you <laughs> yep Totally. You know, gets the idea or like has it, like knows somebody that lives in that neighborhood and is like, oh, I know where that spot is, right, you yeah. know, and then it becomes a whole like thing. Mm -hmm. And that's all well and good too. But to a certain extent, part of the trick is finding the spot. There you yeah. go. Yeah. You know, yeah. part, part of the trick is finding the spot. And, and that's then a, figuring out what to do there. And then figuring out the yeah. correct thing to yeah. do there. Because you could, you know, there's also like a gross, sometimes a gross misuse of... of <laughs> of objects you know sure. yeah uh, that, it's it true right it no, it for sure yeah. it's, definitely. It's, definitely skateboarding happens. is like a you know it's it's an interpretive thing yeah, you, absolutely you, know, you have your it's sort. a follow the leader thing too it's like oh yeah that where's it at yeah yeah and don't get me wrong like mm -hmm. i've done it you know my time in san francisco mm -hmm. you know there's definitely things that i you know i did that other people had done mm -hmm. right um and you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I get it. Uh, I, know, I know New York's like a loud city, but were people ever tripping that you were dude, just like... You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. I've had like, I've had like, I've had like arguments with people like, like five stories up, you know, like I'm on the street. I'm like, dude, you know, like what it... Yeah, they were tripping on like the sound of the dude, cellar. Dude, and, and those cellar doors are loud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. freaking loud. Oh, yeah. You know, I got a lot of friends that ride bikes and they those dudes can cover a lot of ground, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, New York for the most part, I don't want to say it's like everything's been found, but, um, the dudes on the bikes, man, they can cover a lot of ground and they are also, they can, they can ride stuff a lot longer because their bikes are not as loud. Like yeah. they, they can be, they can be quiet on oh, those sure. things. Oh, but yeah. with they don't have the plastic pegs too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With skateboards. And that's part of the other, the other kind of, uh, if you wanted to call it an art form mm -hmm. is that you got to get into the spot. You got to get your trick and you got to get the hell out without, yeah. without an altercation or, you yeah. know, a conversation. Right. Um, and so, you know, there's plenty of spots. I mean, it's with all skateboard spots sure. where you will get kicked out. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always been, I've always tried to be super respectful of people's space yeah. from that standpoint. And so, you know, yeah, it's like, I mean, I mean, I'm sure all skateboarders kind of go through that thing where, you know, you get to a spot and you don't want to disturb, oh, disturb yeah. the yeah. piece. But uh, yeah, the, the, the cellar door thing is, is loud. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, I mean, it's also like, I mean, I'm not saying it's more dangerous than any other skateboard spot, but. Um, it looks like it. It's just, yeah, there's like. Well, has everyone broke? Has it broken before? No, 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 no. Oh. No, no. Those things are pretty sturdy. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen like footage of people falling through them and stuff, yeah. which is kind of funny, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I usually try to be uh, pretty quick with it. Yeah, and just you know, make sure I'm not going to die on anything. <laughs> yeah. <Sure. laughs> so Enjoy didn't really. It was, you said it was kind of a stalemate, you guys. Yeah, we just kind of like, yeah. And, and, and Matt was totally cool, right. you know, and I was like. Yeah, here, let me piss away this check every month. Shit. But uh, yeah, it was just kind of like, I, I really had no, in a sense, I had no control over it. It was mm. just time for that to kind of like, you know, and, and also you can only like, you can only sit through so many like Billy Idol graphics, you know? Like, <laughs> sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, oh, there's a cat on my board this month? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, that was funny with Enjoy. I feel like you'd never had to get any ads. Well, that's, that's, that, that was true. Yeah, yeah that was true. Go. And that was great. And that was great. <laughs> no, you're like, all right, go party. Yeah, yeah just do something yeah. weird. Yeah. And they definitely had incredible ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, great. Incredible ads. There's one thing in uh, the, the, whatever oververt video mm. where Louis's hair falls off yeah they definitely stayed the course yeah of yeah what they... but i i mean i've never been that guy sure. like i'm a pretty like sort of serious if you had to yeah. like categorize me what happened with um traffic traffic came about i i watched uh, i was over at um rich's house um while they were editing via 
Huh. And I watched them kind of like edit. And I was like, damn, you guys got a really sick thing going on. One of my friends from New Jersey rode for it, Andy Batista. Okay. Mm. And um, I was just like, this is really sick. Ooh. And uh, I just talked to Rick and um, I said, you know, what do you think? And he was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. Good and conversation. Sure. And yeah. uh, I had like two tricks in his part in Via. Okay. And then we, man, it, it seemed like such a logical combination, mm. but for whatever reason, it just didn't really, you know, it was poor management. And this was pre like, uh, it, Theories and all yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. So I just tried to hang on for as long as I could. Mm. And at a certain point, you know, like I wasn't, he, there was no, he wasn't paying me. Oh really? And so I was just like, man, I could probably just do without this. But the video part you came out with was great. Uh, Moving in traffic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that was, again, that was just me filming. Yeah. Like I wasn't filming necessarily for any specific project. Right. I was just filming. Like, it's just what I did. Like yeah. you go out skating, you see something that's cool to film. Film it. And you film it. That was a great video part. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Um, KRS-One. And I tried to kind of like, I tried to kind of like, I don't know, uh, at the end of the filming process, I tried to like package it, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 we had a we had definitely like a vision for what the video could have been, yeah, or or was going to be, mm -hmm. and we were I was trying to like work with the brand in terms of like a direction, you know, like because the idea of traffic has like a lot of really amazing set of symbols and like I you know whatever like branding mm -hmm. tactics that can go along with yeah. it a lot of options a lot of options yeah i mean the idea of sitting in traffic is not a fun thing but um, unless you listen to a podcast yeah well so <laughs> so it's funny because that that there is a psychological aspect to that but you know obviously with rick it was you know the idea of moving in traffic sure or, or skating amongst traffic oh yeah which he uh, was good at. The Philly thing is definitely like, in, he definitely incorporated m skating around cars a lot more than mm -hmm. I ever did. Right. But um, yeah, it's like when you're in that city environment, you have to, in, you know, interact with moving vehicles. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, which is, you know, if there's anyone who's a master of that, it's Rick. Totally. Uh, he almost thrived on it. Uh, and that was interesting to watch. Um, that one when he was skating love and he always in the street. Oh, that's his cars. That's, oh, he flicks off no, the cars. No spotter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that's just goes right. for the it. The backside flip too. Completely reckless. The yeah, backside so, flip yeah. Yeah, wow. is, is a good one. Must have been rad skating for his company though. I mean, that's pretty it, fucking sick. Yeah, it was cool considering like basically I had more or less, you know, I had kind of like creative control over all my own content and okay. stuff. But um, it was a small brand, sure. and it was like he was scrambling mm. to kind of. He has like, you know, I don't know how many kids he has, but yeah, he's got a couple kids. Okay, and um, so, you know, and ultimately at the end of the day, it's his brand. Yeah, and so, what are you going to do? It's like it's not my brand, you right? Know? Uh, and I'm also like I'm also uninterested in like the business side of running a skateboard brand, so. Mm -hmm. I was almost like I could inject my input all the time, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, whether or not anything gets done is up to him, so to speak. Okay, mm -hmm. right. For better or for worse, I didn't have to necessarily worry about that, mm -hmm. being responsible for the brand. So, you know, the, and that, that's, a, that's, a, that's conflict as well, because then you're like, are you upset now that you're not, you know, if you want it to do, if you want it to move forward, then yeah, maybe you should get involved on that level. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then it's kind of like your fault. Yeah, it falls on you. But there's also then, like I said, it's his brand. So mm -hmm. he could then nix, you know, anything. Right, right. But um, yeah, it was cool. You know, yeah. and I, I still have a r really great respect for Rick okay. um, and his, you know, what what he, I mean, he's a great skateboarder. Did you just decide to leave or what, what happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, when Theories so. got it involved, I was just like, ah, I can't have dudes from Florida running. The, oh, really? The, yeah. The, the to, to me personally, like, okay. I was just like, this is not, this is not, no, no offense to the Florida thing. Sure. I was just like, 
Not, not your not my thing. Yeah. yeah, not my thing. I thought to myself, like I could probably just do my own thing. Right. Um, but like I said, I was never interested in being like the dude behind the desk. Sort yeah, of thing, you know? it's hard, man. I, and to you, be you... honest, I, I was still very much into skateboarding. Yeah. And so I did, you know, have this idea for stuff. You know, but I was just my thing was every. I just wanted to be skating yeah you know i would much rather take like if i have like two hours to go skating mm -hmm. or even the whole day i want the whole damn day there you go you know like, there you i go. don't i don't want to you know not necessarily compromise but it sounds foolish because essentially at the end of the day you gotta gotta you kind of have to compromise well didn't you start your own thing for i a did while? You... i did and it's still kind of like going oh it is yeah okay but i i just what was the name of it uh well it's it was it, it originally started as it, it, i did a website okay i did like a blog site it was mm. called are you a victim mm -hmm. oh yeah are you a victim.com yeah and basically it started out the same way like theories of atlantis did you mm -hmm. know and it was like um i just basically posted content that was not even like really skateboard content stuff uh, you were into stuff I was into just, mm -hmm. you know, random, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I had the ability to, um, have I interactions with the commenters. Oh yeah. And so, um, so the, are you a victim thing? I basically made like shirts at one point that were like victim brand shirts because the whole point of the website was to, was to interact with people on a level that that kind of like questioned what it is that you're subjected to on a day-to-day -day basis gotcha. from from whatever agency that might be operating uh, against you so to speak okay okay and I'm not trying to say like you are a victim or or, or play into like victimhood mm -hmm. but it was just like I was basically trying to raise awareness and, and not trying, but it was just one of the things I was into yeah. is what is operating on your psyche on a day-to-day -day level, on mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day basis that you are conscious of or unconscious of. Okay. And if you were unconscious of it, I found, I found it to be interesting to potentially, you know, question is this a possibility? Mm. You know, is this a possibility? Is there something greater operating on your psyche that could potentially have the ability to kind of, you know, like maybe keep you down? Okay. But at the same time, if you become aware of it, do you have the potential to move beyond it there, or, or around it? Yeah. Around it, right? Right. And so, uh, so at a certain point, I started making like victim brand, uh, you know, like there's one shirt early on that was like a, like this weird um, uh, clip art thing of this dude like handing like with it like handing money. Okay. And it just said like, "Are you a victim?" Oh. Like questioning like, "What will you do for money?" Mm -hmm. To a certain extent. Sure. You know, and I wasn't trying to make some like grand you know, statement about yeah, anything. It just makes people think a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the content was basically, you know, centered around different events and, you know, obviously like you can get into like the 9-11 thing and mm -hmm. blah, 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 which is a, a wormhole onto a wormhole. Sure. A wormhole. Oh, so yeah. a whole nother podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole nother podcast. <laughs> but um, so, so, so at the, so when people would uh, comment on the site, I would, just like Thrasher used to have the uh, editor response mm -hmm. in the the letters thing, and it was T Ed. Mm -hmm. I start I started to sign my thing Tim and Vic because oh, yeah? that was Vic and Tim victim backwards, oh. Oh. and I was very Vic. much into like um, esoterica and or um, the the language of symbols and. Uh, the, the the way when basically with the way, what I study okay. is that the idea of how energy works and when you get into like influencing people mm -hmm. or influencing anything you're essentially dealing with manipulating energy okay so uh, in in like the realm of like esoterica especially in like uh, when you get into like Aleister Crowley, for mm. instance, or masonry, oh, there, there's plenty of different things that you can compare to these like sort of sectors of like uh, society. Mm -hmm. uh, there is definitely like um, 
this this thing that operates with like um, frontwards and backwards, up and down, mm -hmm. uh, almost like uh, opposing positive and negative uh, energies. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, mirrors, like like I don't mean like a mirror that you look into, mm -hmm. but just like you know, uh, just the way energy bounces off back and forth, back yeah. and forth you yeah. know oh. so uh the tim and vic thing you know i was signing mm. a tim and vic and that just kind of like morphed the brand into this tim and vic moniker which i also use sometimes okay and so the my thing is like tim and vic and you know it's like basically my instagram account oh yeah and so I don't make a lot of things, and it's few and far between. So no boards. I did make. I oh, did, you did. I made three boards, and if you go on my Instagram account, there's like a, a you know, like a little link in there. Oh, okay. And those boards are like they're old. I still have them, oh. and you could still buy them. Oh, there you go. But uh, you know, it's just I just never was like, oh, I want to be like a. I mean, I do want to make a brand. Mm -hmm. I just don't have like the wherewithal at this point to be like a brand manager. Yeah, you put one hundred ten percent into it. Yeah. It's hard to run well, a company. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. want to be out there skating exactly. and just doing your exactly. thing and creative. Yeah, and I, and, and I'm not trying to sound like it's an excuse to like that that I want to be out skating, but it's just I'm just I'm just not that super interested in being like business. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, right. uh, I I will definitely sacrifice that to go out and just practice like switch back five o's there you go <laughs> you know? there like you literally go. like yeah. i like I, I i use my skating like uh it's almost like a yoga maybe not yoga but more of like a martial art okay you know like a practice so i definitely have to like a lot time to myself to go out and just go through those movements sure you know? yeah. because i find that doing the movements is a definitely a release of like you know uh kind of like whatever oh, whatever yeah. people use yoga or martial arts there you go for, and it you keeps know? you young it's, active yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's it's it's, it's so, everything so i i haven't gotten to the point yet where I, I still like do that i still go out and i will skate mm -hmm. you know i skate pretty much by myself but i'll go out and i'll skate and i'll just like i i just work it out yeah you know? and yeah. Uh, i just try and get i try and reach like a place and once I reach that place, I'm like, all right, I'm done skating, You've, you know? And yeah, I, and yeah, I go yeah. And I do whatever the hell else. It's I almost do. like therapy, and definitely, it's, it's every, yeah. it's, it's all of the above, yeah, yeah. right? It helps you in so many different definitely, ways, yeah. you know. It's interesting. Um, you know, I was talking about meditation before, but it's it's interesting how uh, meditation and medication are so close in uh, their, their verbiage. Their, yeah, yeah. Verbiage, yeah, just one one letter. Anger is one letter short of danger. That's true. Oh wow! Yeah, that's interesting. Ang anger and danger. I yeah, there you go. That Drop that D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So nowadays, Just so that's what her. you, huh? Just give it to her. Just give it the give the D to her. Give the D to her. Leave it to Roger. Leave it to Roger. Perverted and uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, profound at the profound. same time. <laughs> <laughs> No, but so that's what you're doing. You're just kind of doing your thing, yeah, going out I mean, there I, skating. I, yeah, I work and I skate. And that's I just, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's not amazing. Now. It's yeah. It's, it's yeah. I wouldn't say it's amazing. What are you doing? No, for? but it is amazing though uh, because work, you could not be skating. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Which is not necessarily an option for me. Like I have to. See? I have to do it. Yeah. yeah. I'm still very compulsive about my skating. Yeah. And I always was. You know. What about a video part? Hmm? You want to film some new shit? Get, get it out there. If you get me a filmer, you're sitting right next to him. Yeah? yeah. Right. Okay. I live in right. Dennis. How, how, <laughs> okay. I would, you know what? I would do it, and I probably could do it, but it would take, I would have to, like, quit my job. Oh, yeah. You know, which is, is kind of an option for me. Oh, there you go. Because I, I don't do anything that's, like, you know, going to save the world or anything. <laughs> but um, but I could I could film cool stuff. Well, we'd all love to see it. Yeah, it would, cool. it would be cool. It would be cool. I don't know what it would look like as a finished product. And people have definitely asked me, like, are you going to film another video part? And I'm like thinking to myself, dude, my video parts take like freaking years sometimes. <laughs> I mean, all people's video parts potentially. Yeah, of course. There was a but... point in time where people's video parts took years, but now it's getting to the point where you don't, have yeah. to, you don't have to worry about content the way you did back in the day mm -hmm. now it could be like your foot could come off and you're like yeah put it in well with that being said too would you if you did say you did film a video part now yeah. would yeah. you 
would you stay with your whole thing of just filming in New York and doing that? Or would you be open to like, hey, I'm going to come out here and skate Venice and film with and go to a table school? Trust me, if I had a budget, yeah, if I had a support network, sure, I would definitely do whatever the hell whatever needed to be done to do that. Okay, and I would love to do that. I do have a, 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 a great admiration for the objects and the terrain in New York City. There you go. But, you know, I mean, I'm it, open to sort of anything. Right. How, how do you find these spots? Do you use Google Maps a lot? No, no, no. I never. I, so you I, just go find it yeah, on your phone. I mean, all of that stuff was before. All I'm of saying, those video parts were before Google Maps. Totally. But um, the Google Maps us. thing is insane. Yeah. I mean, you could. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and it's, it's funny. I, uh, I actually do with LA mm-hmm. and I said this I mentioned this before but I'll just roam the streets of Venice they, yeah. on Google Maps just mm-hmm. like looking for like not a spots <laughs> <laughs> like literally like yeah. I'll, I will do that and uh, there's not many other cities that I do right. but there are definitely in terms of skateboard spots and it's you know skateboard spots is a loaded sort of thing but but you know sometimes I'll just plop a thing down in Chicago and I'll just be like what what does this street look yeah. like you know yeah um Definitely, it's insane. It's an insane tool. But like you said, just if it's the obstacle, you put the obstacle in front of you, the yeah. correct obstacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could. And at this know. point, it's almost like, you know, if I can skate and do anything on an mm-hmm. object, that's great. You know, and so, uh, you know, like for my Instagram account, I just I, I I build like stuff, and I'm just I set my camera up, and it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. If you told me like ten years ago that I was going to be doing that. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now I find it's like, it, that gives me great joy too, you know, just to like not even have to deal with a filmer at totally. this point. Totally. It's yeah. like, yeah. It, like it yourself. 10, 15 years ago, I didn't have a filmer, but I also didn't have a phone on my camera. There you yeah. go. I mean, a camera, camera on my camera phone. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same, 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 same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't like even shoot skateboard anymore. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. every kid's got a goddamn iPhone in their pocket. That's true. Yeah. And and the iPhone footage is is uh, usable in the video parts. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 1080, all this fucking yeah. shit. I'll yeah. just go, Kelly, I'll go film Kelly. Kelly will go film me. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't need Raj. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's it's almost like... hot ones. It's almost unfortunate go. to think, like, if that stuff existed, you know... Oh, my God. But, but then again, you know, it's, it's also... And I don't want to say it's like... Um, but we'd be seeing the same shit if 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 the, if all this Instagram stuff was in the nineties. Yeah, you, we'd yeah. still be seeing you're right. crazy skating. Yeah, cr- horrible skating. Yeah. all of the above. I think, <laughs> they, call, I think they call it the four hundred one. Okay, it's, sure. It's, it's sure. always existed in yeah. skateboarding. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right. It's yeah. you know there's just some mediums. Yeah, but um, yeah. I mean, whatever. Well, listen, I'd love to see another video part of you. You know, I, I yeah, I'm a big too. fan. I, I would say throughout the years, man. I'd recommend. I don't know if you're into doing this, but have you ever been to China before to skate? No. China spots there in China, like the cutty spots there are actually incredible. Yeah, Yeah. they're pretty. But it's going out there as a mission. It's a far swim. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) but that was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Skateboarding was going there because it's a whole new world. Yeah, yeah. And you're just spots you've never seen. But it's funny because cities have. It's never been no us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like you were saying, though, you need that support system. You, you, and and yeah. it's, it's few and far between nowadays, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, Agreed. you got to be with the right companies that have the budgets to go out yeah, yeah, there yeah, and yeah, do yeah, these yeah. things, yeah. you know? Yeah. Skate companies, they're not rich, you yeah. know? Some it's, of them are. Some I'm of them are. I'm just saying some, yeah. some of well, them aren't. Well, so, yeah, some of them are, but some of them aren't skate companies yeah. that yeah. are in, you know, skateboarding. Uh, whatever. I mean, it's all par for the course yeah I mean, even yeah. if it was you know 20 years ago we would still have the same you know you what know, i mean sort of like problems or obstacles to kind of like for navigate sure. you know yeah i mean i don't know like i said i still skate yeah as as much as i can and i'm still very passionate about mm-hmm. it and i still really enjoy it and that's kind of like what i think is most important yeah um even coming out here it's like you know to be honest, it, like the rain today, like it rained and mm-hmm. stuff. And I, when it dried up, I was like, oh man, like I could probably go skate somewhere. But yeah. I got to like, you know, not that I got to do this, but it was like, I don't know. Yeah. You still feel it. Yeah. You yeah. still feel it. Yeah, it's yeah. in you. Because it's a great, it's a great, the, the, the end product is a great feeling. You know? Totally. So. So. This has been fabulous. <laughs> this is a, dude, you've been such a great fucking guest, man. Cool, man. All yeah. the stories. Really appreciate and, it. Yeah. everything and i and i really appreciate the show it's a great show oh, appreciate yeah. that thank yeah. you bro 
we at the end of the show we always like to give give a gift coffee mug. if we could uh oh there you go no no we got a i got a better one for you All right, cool. <laughs> can we give you some nine club stuff Absolutely. to take home yeah, and yeah. um and instagram <laughs> we got uh kelly will you please yeah. do the honors of course what uh what size do you wear uh medium mediums yeah. okay what's a hunter tennis it's a school in new york oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh okay uh, hunter's a college and i like the um the gray uh, and the purple look good together thank oh, you yeah, yeah i like the idea of well hunting mm -hmm. yep uh and then tennis very refined yeah. do you hunt no could you kill no i have a problem with i i love animals i do, i love animals too. i would i couldn't hell no if i had to if i was stuck and i needed to survive you would kill it i would have to you would have to it's i i but but going f hunting for a sport Oh, it's crazy. I'm not into that. Crazy. I can't do it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's horrible. What uh, if you're starving and the only thing around is an iguana? I'd wow. cook that shit up. Yeah, yeah. An Make iguana. a fire and cook it up. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you're 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 like just you, you would well, your survival it, you, you instincts. Would not have a you would choice. have to. Yeah, you yeah. would not have a choice. You would probably even eat the iguana without even cooking it. But isn't this weird though? I've, I've said this. Sick. <laughs> I've said this before though. But I have no problem fishing. I can fish. I can't fish either. You have a problem with that? I mean, you know, you can't cuddle a fish. Yeah, I can't pet it or something. <laughs> I don't know. Fishing is a weird one. But I have no problem. I could fish and catch it and then cook and, it and eat it. But Oh, yeah? Cook it and eat sure. it? Sure. Really? Oh, yeah. What is the difference between the fish and the... That's the thing. I don't know. Maybe it's the line that I'm using. Maybe it's the method that you're killing something. Like You're not blowing his like, brains out? <laughs> yeah. It's inhumane that's... to me. You know? It's like I can't go out and kill a deer. Yeah. These things are beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you suffocate it. What, go around and put a bag around its head, Raj? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> if that actually you, you happened, take, though, But you take fucked. a fish out of water and you're basically suffocating it. <sighs> it's, tr it's true. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. It's this weird divide. It's a weird yeah, line that I have. I'm not a like, huge promoter of like the vegan lifestyle. But you're not running around telling everyone you're vegan? and Well, you know, I mean, if I have to like, if that comes up, like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, sure. But, um, you know. There was a there was a point in time where I was interacting with this this person that ran a vegan restaurant and uh, and it was also at a time that coincided with meditating. Oh yeah, a lot. Okay. And uh, talking to this person, she basically I don't know. It was something that that the, just listening to the way she spoke about it, it made a lot of sense. And then there was the idea of absorbing. You know when a, when a, when an animal uh, is essentially murdered, yeah, you are that 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 process. I think uh, uh, it kind of creates a lot of uh, negative energy, negative in, energy. Yeah. inside the meat, yeah. inside the meat, yeah, and, uh, inside the organism, mm -hmm. and then you consuming the meat is mm -hmm. not a natural thing. The other thing right. is that you know if you have a dog that you that you that you take care of, yeah. a pet dog, sure, you know, would you eat your dog? Not a, not you wouldn't need it if in a survival in situation, a survival situation maybe no I could right maybe, maybe maybe like if I have I have a cat named Larry and if it came would I eat Larry yeah would you eat Larry it's tough man wow. it is, but it's the same thing so, <laughs> it's the same thing she's such a good girl yeah tasty. Oh wow! Tasty. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> but that's I know I have, I have heard up. that though that the negative energy in the meat and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so, they're killed pretty, yeah, like, it's, brutally. It's crazy, you know. Not, and, and, not and you know, I, 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 you know, I'm, I definitely like. There was a point in time where I ate meat and stuff. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm not like a hardcore promoter of the, the 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 like vegan lifestyle. Right. But you practice it. You. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, but there's definitely something that makes sense to me. Sorry that you shouldn't be um consuming flesh like that right. you know what i'm saying yeah. like you know and i'm sure people are gonna have problems with that whatever of course say, everybody say. does but, but um you know there's definitely the uh the, the consumption of that like sort of process of creating negative energy that yeah. i think is uh you know problematic the good thing is is the positive energy outweighs the negative True. boom and this is the most positive energy you can have, man. Cool. Here's a switch flip, Excellent. switch manny mug for I you. I appreciate it. Thank you. There's a long sleeve Excellent. for you, bro. Thank you. And uh, how about a nice hoodie? Oh, thank you, you so know? much. Notice you have the I Hunter uh, yeah, yeah. tennis hoodie on. Yeah, cool. 
Dude, listen, this has been a pleasure yeah, yeah. and an honor. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. Oh, yeah, my thank gosh. And have a, have you, a, hey, have a great rest of the stay here. How long are you in town for? Uh, I'm taking off in two days. So it's been like two weeks. Okay. So, yeah, it was great. Wow. Had a great, great time out here. Going back to the polar vortex? Polar vortex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man. Who knows what that's going to, you know. It'll be warm, I mean, man. yeah, 40 degrees, I'm cool. I've even gotten it down to like 35. I'm cool, you know. 35. Yeah, it's it's a trip, man. Skating in cold weather. I mean, I you know. Oh yeah. If it's like 70 out here, I'm like chilly. It reminds you that you're alive. Can't do it, man. Yeah. But listen, bro. Thank you again. And yeah, yeah. Hey, you. seriously, good luck with everything that you're cool. doing now. And yeah. and man, such an honor to have him here, bro. Yeah, I'm like it all worked out. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions, Kelly? I I definitely can ask more questions. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>